And we're here with, with Rel. It's me, Deeg. I'm so excited. I can't even say my name first. This is the Deeg Podcast. I'm interviewing Rel, the lead designer of Planet Side 2 at Rogue Planet Games. How the hell are you, Rel? I'm pretty okay. <laughs> pretty okay. That's pretty, a little bit of a charge okay. statement. Right Should we unpack yeah. that? Are you really doing okay, man? <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. No, I'm happy to be here. I mean, we, we spoke what? Uh, last year... When was it? Was it about? This it was time? like summer of 2020, man. It was right at the okay. start of the pandemic, if you can believe that. Mm. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, yeah. In some ways, it seems like all oh, forever ago, and in some ways, it seems like it was just yesterday. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm thrilled to have you, man. Um, and it's especially cool to have you on because Planet Side Two just saw one of its coolest things to ever happen, like since I've been paying attention to it which is, I, I want to start off with this, man. I remember those streams, uh, the stream you did all those years ago talking about Osher. Do you remember this? The first version uh, of Osher you showed to the community? Yeah, I think that was 2018. 2018. Okay, now yeah. all those years ago. A while ago, anyway. And you fucking did it, man. Y'all got Osher into the game. The first major massive continent to be added to Planet Side since Awesome which was truly an eternity ago. How does that feel, man, to finally get that in? Uh, yeah, that was uh, a challenge. Because uh, not only did we deliver like a, you know, a massive continent, which is just, I, I think, healthy for the game overall to have more play spaces to, uh -huh. to play in, right? Like we, you know, Hassan was back in 2014. So we're looking like seven plus years ago. And so a new continent and then totally new mechanics too. Uh -huh. And the mechanics portion of it was like, that was the the crazy bit where, you know, can we pull it off? Like, is it going to, you know, meet like our, you know, quality bar? And is it going to be fun for the the players? Is it going to add more depth to the, to the experience? And uh, I think so. Like, it, it totally opens us up to new, uh, well, new styles of gameplay in the future. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and then you see some of that, you know, in the roadmap uh, later this year. Hopefully we can expand upon that yeah. uh, to some degree. And I know we'll get into that later, but yeah, it was like more yeah. about the roadmap. No, it's more about the roadmap. I just want to gush about really Osher for a minute out. first. Yeah, Let's do I, that. I don't. I don't know if you realize how much fun some people are having with this with this place, man. So do you I, realize? So it's it is it's exciting to me because um, the so release of Osher. Yeah. The the update itself. I mean, there's there is bugs and whatever because there's you know happens to be and totally new mechanics and everything else, but like the sheer scope of that update and the excitement of the players, the the main source of like feedback that it got or the, like the common thread was, this makes me feel like Planet Side 2 back in 2012. Mm -hmm. And like, mm -hmm. to me, that's like, yeah, nailed it. <laughs> you know? Dude, yes. And Dude, yes. I, I'm sure, I'm sure the luster will wear off just, you know, being like a, yeah. a realist, right? And, you know, I'm sure it has for certain people. And of, of course, there's a very different style, I think, that was cult or a style of gameplay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was kind of cultivated over the years, you know, where we've kind of gotten away from it. Games gotten faster, games gotten more infantry centric and that sort of thing. Uh, but we, you know, the, the map style uh, is, I think, it's sort of like best of both worlds, mm -hmm. where we can create, you know, use the current style of gameplay to create the old style of excitement that people have, you know, kind of had there from the start. So. Mm -hmm. I resonate with that. That it there's a I, I posted a meme on my Twitter that like about people who were enjoying Osher and people who weren't. And the the, the picture I used for the people who were enjoying it was that snap of the the critic from Ratatouille. Have you seen that movie? Uh, a long time ago. I can briefly sketch it out because it's it's worth understanding. Uh, this is a movie where the protagonist is a a young chef and the mouse who actually tells him what to cook. It's a, it's like a cartoony movie, so the mouse is, you know, whatever. Okay, you don't need to know about the mouse. But the important thing is that the main nemesis in this movie is this awful critic. This awful critic who was around assassinating restaurants for following the standards, for not meeting expectations, for not doing what they're supposed to be doing as, as stewards of the fine art of cuisine. And uh, the chef comes up with this dish that he thinks is just going to kill, or the mouse more appropriately. And it's ratatouille, which is this French dish that's just kind of, um, I don't know a lot about it, French cuisine. But what happens is 
the chef manages to make a dish that is so effective that it takes this critic like back to a moment in their childhood. Like he tastes the dish and it's like, oh, you call back to that mode of being from when you were that stuck in your memory so keenly because it was so strong. And uh, I may be overstating it a little bit, okay? I get enthusiastic. But mm -hmm. that sense of returning really does, for me, exist with Osher and with a lot of people I've talked to. Yeah. So congrats. Cool. I'm, I'm glad. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the team has done an amazing job. You know, lots of, <laughs> lots, lots of work. Uh, definitely challenges uh, in the way that we were able to, to get past and mm -hmm. a lot of, yeah, no, it's, it's ambitious, you know, and we, we like being ambitious here on, <laughs> on planet side too, just in general. Okay. Yeah. What was the mood like in like the virtual office when you finally got Osher out? Was it relief? Mm. Okay. We're moving on to the next thing. Or was it more like they like it? Thank God. What was the feeling? You know, that's, that's an interesting question that I don't know that I have a great answer for. I think okay. that the sort of the, the work from home situation mm. has created so a weird. little bit of a, it's, it's made things a little bit more difficult to, to connect. Like, you know, we have our chats and we go back and forth and that sort of thing, but there is, there is a different type of excitement when you're in person compared to, to online. So it's harder to share um, that. Yeah. I think so. I agree. Yeah. So in other words, Hard to say. Okay. Well, yeah. um, I'm going to share. <laughs> I the mean, infectious... obviously excited. They love seeing. So let me let me chime uh -huh. in before this gets pulled out of context. The um, <laughs> the most the most uh, valuable thing for me to share to the team is what you all are saying, okay. like in you know on, on Reddit or on whatever uh, whatever social media platform, Twitter or, or Facebook or, or what have you. Like that's that's the easiest way for us to make a connection to to what's like going on. Um, whereas, yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's the easiest. So it's really important for people who are having a good time to say something about it. Oh yeah. And you know, so to key in on that, despite, okay. So there's, there's always like, you know, a lot, level of negativity on, on Reddit and of just, course. you know, kind of in general, right. Mm -hmm. And that's to be expected. We understand that. Um, and that when I, to, so we, we take that as a truth. And then when we see people who are, who are excited, um, despite that, mm -hmm. uh, cause it, it takes, uh, guts, I would say to like speak up against the, the crowd. Like when Reddit has a very, uh, like group think sort of like mentality going on. And that's just, mm -hmm. you know, to some degree, it's like there, there's some internet, you know, culture in there that just, that's just a thing. But, uh, yeah, so when when somebody says an opinion that's that's contrary, they they tend to be like you know tamped down and you know made to like it doesn't matter really how relevant that opinion is, um, you know, or like how how realistic it is. Uh, so so when you do have a, an opinion that tends to go against the the grain of what others were sure. saying, you know, whether it's sure. you know just like the like trepidation or like um, you know. Uh, you know, this, the sort of thing can never work or, you know, for somebody to speak against that, there's, it, it does so much more, uh, or it like, it speaks to me so much more. Yeah. It takes that. You know, maybe I'm a little bit off. If you go to the uh, Reddit and, and you see people saying Osher sucks or another disappointment right. or, 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 mm -hmm. or, 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 or a rail is bad meme, which, you know, right. that's where those things get, that's where those things go. That's what the subreddit is for. I mean, other stuff too, yep. but it's also for that. Um, then, and you see one guy who's like, this is amazing. And yeah, there is like a more significant moment of inertia to overcome in order to be able to provide mm -hmm. feedback like that when you have that kind of ground level negativity that's there. And we all acknowledge that there's ground level negativity in this community. And it's just too old. Like we all, we've all been here for too long. 10 years mm -hmm. is a long time. Oh, yeah. So that kind of thing just happens. Um, you know, for Osher in particular, it's um, the men, or the the release uh, of the continent. So something that I, I don't see happen a lot is people who went into it with a with a like, oh, this will never work. You know, just a mm -hmm. standard pessimism, um, but then changing their perspective. Mm. Like, oh, this is actually 
this is actually way more interesting than I thought it would be or more compelling than I thought it would be. Like mm -hmm. that sort of switch hardly ever happens, right. uh, regardless of what you, you put out. Usually well, you it's just like- you kind of prejudge it. You know, you know what, you're, what to expect. Mm -hmm. You go in like, this is the way I'm going to feel. And then something right. different happens. Yeah, because people tend to find what they're, like they, they want to reaffirm their beliefs, right? They don't want to you know, change their, their opinions. That it's natural. So That's I survival. Saw... <laughs> We've got to find our people. <laughs> I saw a lot of that though. Just you know, people being like, "Wow!" Uh, so like the critic in Ratatouille, right? Where yes. you know, just just uh, something clicks that they didn't expect, uh, mm -hmm. and so yeah, I'm and very that much more power about the release yeah. of this. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I definitely felt that way. Although I will admit, I'm a I'm an internal optimist, so I went into it expecting something cool to happen. I didn't know what that cool thing was going to be be honest with you the tridents look pretty interesting some of the bases look pretty cool like like pommel gardens is really weird and cool century mining operations like a good place to frag out um mirror bay seem i mean <laughs> it seems like osher's version of the crown but fights that just never end <laughs> and yeah. uh but what i didn't expect was to find myself zerging down lanes and having the best fucking time in planet side i've had mm -hmm. A long time did not expect that and I, I use the word zerging with love okay it's it's a term that's used pejoratively but there is something about the ground truth of planet side about capturing a base loading up your vehicles driving to the next base and the thing that osher is doing for me that is so so surprising to me is is putting me in situations where i feel like i want to be in a vehicle as as I, I don't remember if you pointed this out before the interview or after we started because we talked for a few minutes ahead of time. But I've always played infantry in Planet Side Two. I'm Mister Redeploy, Mister Joint Combat, teleport between my you know twenty four to forty eight player fights, get a nice comfortable rhythm going. When the fight dies, I'm a little annoyed. You know, I'm not happy that we won. But this gave me something enough different and enough and uh, different enough and surprising enough to like suddenly get construction on my character to be like what is this construction all about really i should mm. i should explore this figure it out the other day on stream i made a construction base that wasn't destroyed i mean no one attacked it either but it wasn't destroyed and that was so exciting i just got to build it um and uh i found myself like um learning and sorting out how to drive a harasser which is like i don't know gotta be like the most fun ground vehicle on planet side i love harassers um but that's a whole part of the game i didn't I never cared to understand. I didn't even know the names of like the vehicle weapons. So when I see like the meatballs coming out of the harassers, I didn't know what that was. Oh, that's a halberd. Okay. I know what that is now because I'm actually engaging with that part of the game. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been really cool seeing these kinds of field fights that happen between the uh, more traditional style bases. These field fights with the construction um, and these player made bases which I didn't know if a fight at a player-made base could ever actually be very fun. I wondered if you and the team felt... How, how confident did you feel that players would find these construction uh, bases on Osher fun? I know you've experimented around with it before on like Esamir and some of these other places. Yeah, so the experimentation is is kind of the key because uh -huh. i i'll say that you know we we push more on uh Esimir with some of the bases tried like you know when we blew up the shattered warp gate there's that extra lane that's up there now that has no uh spawn points and it's just you know construction yeah yeah uh, and now there's stuff to like kind of build around too but it's a little bit out of the way so it's not really interfering with the, with the main game um mm -hmm. i will say that those sorts of bases had varying levels of su success right. like the one of the biggest factors uh that contributes to well here i'm not going to get off topic uh for the construction based stuff it was kind of like a little bit of a risky bet i feel like okay. i still think that there's too many construction bases a little bit of a roll of the dice like, oh okay uh yeah yeah so originally actually the the thought was like oh, okay you know we're gonna have a lot of construction bases and that sort of thing um mm -hmm. but it's something it just doesn't feel quite right because uh, they have to be in the right place like mm. that that matters um distance between bases matters right uh the the sort of um 
you know, hitting a harder dev made base and then having uh, a transitional base in between, mm -hmm. like that sort of thing matters too. Um, and when I say that there's too many construction bases on Osher, like we're probably going to go and address the uh, the bases most near the the warp gates and make those mm. so they're not you know construction bases like the yeah, southwestern sure. warp gate has just too much going on. Yeah, because um, I got stuck there a couple times, so I I'm sympathetic. Right, right. And there's there's just certain aspects of you know dev made bases versus um, the more fluid like construction bases that uh, like sometimes you want players to kind of like power through certain areas. So like okay. the, like the, in the capture times are intentionally low. The bases are intentionally easier to capture. Mm. You know they're they're not all fortresses. Um, and having that sort of like uh, constant, it's just not the same thing the entire time. Is the, it's also the variety and an experience right, variety is, as you're going. It's through. fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So some of those lessons we learned, um, some of those lessons I feel like we we know and then weren't quite able to achieve mm. uh, with Osher due to mostly due to time time constraints. Sure. So like we'd love to you know go back and add you know more and, and make some changes and just you know make the map better overall. But for the most part, like a lot of like the the lattices were very intentionally um, put together. Mm -hmm. uh, you can argue that there's, you know, more flexibility needed or less flexibility needed, but mm. this is one of the few continents, when you think about it, that actually gets fights at the warp gate. Right. Like, I noticed that. And that's, that is something that, so when you, when you think about, oh, there's less bases on Osher, but you're fighting at all of them, right? Yeah. So opposed to like, ah, oh, you never, you know, fight up at Benson's It's one of the tragedies that's these other continents. A... Like, is, is it, exactly. is it Fort Liberty is that really cool infantry base on Hawson mm -hmm. that's close to warp yeah. gate, so you never actually fight there? Like, right. I, th yeah, I think that's what it like is. And all the time. some of these, like, um, what's the, the transitional alert state called where you just have the lanes on the outside? Uh, yeah, like the mini meltdowns or yeah. um, or the, the un unstable work gates. Yeah, uh, yeah. But it's cool to, to fight all the different out. bases. Mm -hmm. um, that is fodder for a lot of people who especially know these interior bases so well. Your TI alloys, your crowns, your series hydroponics. Like... How many thousands of times can it be fun to go to those places, especially if you feel right. like you have no other good options? Yeah. So some of the um, the design of Osher was to avoid like that problem. Mm -hmm. And now maybe there's a little bit too much fighting like right outside the flotilla, but that's something that you know we could be resolved, or yeah. that we can resolve rather. Um, okay. Yeah. So I feel like um, there's still plenty of there's lessons that were taken from the earlier continents and then integrated, but there's also plenty of experimentation. Um, that has been done that we can learn from in mm -hmm. this constant state of learning and, you know, just, just trying new stuff is what I, what I feel like is one of the main things that has given Planetside 2 its longevity. If it were, well, yeah, maybe that's, that's a whole different, uh, different you're thing, ready, but, ready to get philosophical on us. Uh, save that part for later. Well, uh, even functional, just okay. if you, if you stay stagnant. Then I'm, I'm not sure that you know you can continue to make the same progress, like or mm. you know the what kind of progress, made. you know, uh, just like getting to the tenth year of Planet Side Two. Right. Uh, I think a lot of that is founded in the ambition of you know each year that we've had prior, mm -hmm. and even on you know the the six man team back in 2019 uh, right. prior, I, I still During feel the like dark we days. were trying to. No, well, dark days, but I still feel like we're constantly trying new stuff. Yeah. Like NSO as a faction mm. was implemented on that very small team. Right. And while it, you know, didn't receive a phase two for a couple of years, mm -hmm. it's still, it's, it's a catalyst for something that we can, you know, then build upon later. Right. Yeah. There's clearly yeah. a soul of ambition in the idea of saying, well, fourth factioning happens when it, when the community uses mm. that term or talking about people who hop around factions to find the fun fight. Why not make it real? That's that's saying we believe in something bigger and better, and we're going to try it. I think it's beautiful, man. Mm -hmm. I think it's beautiful, and I love Osher. And uh, you know, one of the first things I heard from uh, the, 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 from from people in the community when Osher was just hitting live is uh, critiquing the the actual the lattice uh, overall lattice structure and how it tends to put people on the outsides of the map. So it was really good to hear you say, oh, well, we were conscious of a need to want people to fight it more than just the interior bases and how a more traditional lattice structure tends to produce that outcome. Um, I like it. I think it's cool. And um, I have found myself more consistently surprised by Osher than pretty much anything else that's come into the game since 
well, since you and I last talked back in 2020. Mm -hmm. So cool. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Massive kudos from me. I'm always sad when Osher is not open when I get there. I log in at night. Mm -hmm. I think so. That's actually just a smaller thing that we learned from too, where uh -huh. Esmir was like, like, oh, you know, we did the campaign and then Esmir is not unlocked. What the heck? And then we're like, okay, well, we'll just unlock, mm -hmm. you know, do this auto unlock thing. And then it's just going to be auto unlocking <laughs> for quite some time. And then people were burnt out. Ah, oh, it's just Esmir the entire time. Um, so doing the like the first weekend, you know, to get the the initial hype and people in and everybody playing. Yeah. Um, I was I was actually very concerned that people would get sick of it just in that first weekend. Mm. Because, you know, when we have we have such a hardcore, you know, community and they can yeah. play for, you know, like ah, five hour sessions or whatever. And if it's all Osher, you know, sure. or all one continent in general, that's a big ask. Um, mm -hmm. you know, just in the scheme of things. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm glad that we hit that first weekend and then we kind of got reeled it back and now it's at a good you know place where people like, are still excited that felt pretty right. to go to Osher. Mm. Like you gave the early adopters who are there on launch day the chance to bang through the continent as fast as fast as they want to and they want to get yeah. through it fast and got back to a more regular cadence before they got sick of it. I think it worked. One of the um I was talking to Kamikaze seventy eight last week um on the podcast and uh one of the analogies we kind of came up with on the fly was like that of a restaurant. And you can kind of see each of the continents as like a different kind of cuisine. Um, and within the continent, there are different bases, there are different dishes. Oh, this, this metaphor kind of works anyway. And sometimes you show up to the restaurant and if they're never serving the kind of cuisine, uh, it's like it get, can get kind of frustrating. Um, the kind of cuisine that, that is for you that you like the best. Maybe you're a Hassan guy. And whenever Hassan's not open, you're like, eh. Maybe we'll try something else. So that's uh, that's an interesting pain point. Um, it actually made me kind of think about what would planet side look like if every single server had four or five continents open, if there were that many people. How amazing would that look like? Is that a so fantasy was, you uh, have? Um, well, you know, my goal is to increase populations, right? That's, yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, uh, that would that would be the ideal. Um, you know, in any any case. And I think your outcome or like your uh, end result, because I watched that that too. Oh, um, okay. I was, okay. I was lurking um, while you were you know, interviewing Kamikaze. Lurking around. And, uh, and uh, the result was like, well, if we had more people, all the restaurants would be open, you know, basically. And, uh, yeah. you know, we don't. Um, <laughs> so mm -hmm. I, I think that um, that that would certainly be the the ideal. And I'd love to, man, I'd would, I would love to even have just like the, the multi- uh, continent alerts back again, you know, people just doing, you know, large, like massive, uh, orchestrated, uh, you know, battles across, uh, multiple yeah. continents. But I think for Osher, just knowing that, you know, that necessarily wasn't going to be the case. One of the things we tried to do, and you can argue whether or not we, we achieved it, um, mm -hmm. but was to have like a little bit of something for everybody. Mm. So, you know, construction is, there is a, there is a portion of the community who really enjoys construction. Mm -hmm. And no other continent really is Showcases capable of it. like, yeah, right, yeah. Um, so, so that's you know something that people could feel like is impactful, and even people who you know maybe don't have an interest in construction because of just how or like um, at the fringes it is, now gets mm -hmm. an opportunity to like kind of like with, like, like with that. me that um, happened to me, hundred percent, right for sure. Um, infantry players in particular, there are some good bases on Osher that are like very they're cut off from from air to ground. They're you know mm -hmm. they're uh, just, or so like sentry mining operation, just as an example, Yes, uh, is one where it's, you know, strictly indoors and, and that sort of thing. Um, and there's just a, a lot of good infantry focused combat spaces in general, uh, for those types of players, I think less so maybe than, um, than the sort of com like combined arms element, but, and then also we have, <laughs> Uh, just lots of space for vehicles. You see vehicles all the time. Some yes. of it is, uh, I feel like, due to the fact that we've kind of, like the islands are kind of small, like there isn't mm -hmm. massive places where you can kind of go to to avoid vehicles, um, yet the bases are oftentimes close enough to uh, to incentivize like the foot zerging, mm -hmm. which to me feels like the most, I think that's when Planet Side is at its most It's the back of the like. box. That's is, what the game is yeah, at the back exactly. of the box. Exactly. Yeah, you're That's running across, you know, and there's explosions and stuff you like see that. Planes like planes going off and that. explosions right. and like a tank yeah. is zooming over a rock and yeah. And I feel like creating that sort of combined arm experience with 
little sections that are for each individual type of player has hopefully um, created like a, a continent that is, is just versatile, uh, mm -hmm. is, is my hope at least to where mm -hmm. even if you're a hardcore infantry player, you can still see Osher and say like, okay, I like fighting in the tridents, you know, mm -hmm. and then go to a trident and that sort of thing. Sure. Uh, yeah, at least that, that was the, the goal from the outset. And I'm sure it leans, you know, more some ways than others. But mm -hmm. yeah, I think uh, development of continents moving forward would, would be more like, I mean, you know, were we to do that, um, would be mm -hmm. more oriented towards trying to hit all of those little pockets of the community instead mm. of... So making uh, more sort of specialized of experiences, like, being like, yeah, this continent is really for the mag rider drivers. Or this con is really. Oh, I mean, this is kind of what this is with the, the water. Well, no, the, the opposite of that. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, I don't don't want a continent that's just for vehicles. Don't want a continent that's just for infantry. I want okay. there to be, yeah, small. You want to make sure each you can have your each fill. is a little bit for everything. A little bit for everyone. Right. Everyone's got their moment we, to shine. Right. That that's mm. the goal, I think, for okay. for a well constructed continent. Okay. And I don't know, you know, if that's really hit on anything or any of the, the current continents, but I was trying to move that direction for Osher. Sure. And I think that if there's any changes to be made in the future, they should probably go sort of that direction. Okay. Uh, yeah. Just get, give a little that bit. Sounds of really to, to that sounds yeah. really hard. I'd be honest. That sounds really hard. Oh, absolutely. How so, hard was it to make this, to design this continent? Um, it was a long process. I'll say that the, the designers um, that we had working on um, this, actually, everybody except for me, um, was very new to terrain editor, mm -hmm. and or to our like terrain editing tools. So mm -hmm. there's like you can actually see um, how some of the the uh, bases are set up are just a little bit different um, in their like approach and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, even like cleanliness and, and that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, try to you know we had conversations about every just designer the, has their, a little like, design stamp. principles for. <laughs> right. Yeah. So there's, there's definitely some of the varieties like due to, to that. Some people, you know, took to it better than, than others. And I, I think, you know, personally, just on the de like development team, we have areas that we can improve on, you know, because of that. But even so, like, I think they did a phenomenal job. Like mm. we, it's a lot of ground to cover and you don't really realize that until you're actually there placing all the bushes <laughs> and <laughs> placing all the rocks and finding out where all the holes are between the rocks. So, <laughs> yeah, it's speaking way more of, trouble than you you think. Speaking of yeah. the holes in the rocks, I had this, I, I had a fight in, on, on a show that, that surprised the crap out of me the other day. Um, first kind of fight I've ever had like this on planet side, where there's a base and I can't remember what it's called. I think it's in the southeasterly part of the continent, where it's a con it's a, a construction base, so there's no spawn room, and the point is inside of a hollow cave Remnant and, of, yeah 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 okay and you can build construction inside of it and what was happening was uh vanu um i was i play purple had a silo inside the base and they were constantly throwing up blast shields to block off the the, the doors and you would have these fights where we, we were holding we were holding them off with, with small arms fire like you know, NC maxes and heavies all trying to push in at once. And then the, the, and then the blast wall would go up and it would come down in like a few seconds because of the hail of fire. So you would see these mm. periods of like, like almost like, like a real battle. Oh God, I feel so, uh, I feel weird saying that. Uh, but where, <laughs> where the wall would go up and everyone would like run around and revive everybody. And then the wall would come down and everyone would go back to their positions. It was, yeah. uh, it was cool, man. That's legit. Yeah, and no, I was playing the uh, you know playing the other day, and uh, honestly, I I really like the water mechanics when you're in a vehicle. Um, personally, being able to escape, uh, so like I was flying around in Galaxy, and you know, just like anytime you know, I'm taking a bunch of damage, just the like air going vehicles feel so cool and underwater. They, they, they feel like yeah, they belong they, there. It's weird. I didn't expect. Hmm. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think. I think they're they're in a pretty okay spot um, overall, and I think just the the water mechanics uh -huh. in general, being able to use them as like soft cover to avoid you know taking okay. damage is a really fun aspect mm. uh, that's been introduced. 
Yeah, I'm I'm sure you're right. Look, and I'm sure there are a lot of people who have very strong opinions about like whether mm -hmm. air vehicles belong underwater, whether it's healthy to, you know, break line of sight with water with how with how readily available it is here. It's a very different dynamic when you're dealing with air vehicles here compared to any other continent for that reason. I'm just saying, like for me on a visceral uh kind of like brainstem level, that when I took a scythe under the water, I was surprised at how much it felt like it was it handled just like an underwater vehicle should handle, just mm. with the native controls and what y'all have done with the water. How hard does nice. it make to water the water mechanics in general? Is that a big lift? Oh, there, uh, yeah. Uh, we'll be right back, folks. Oh, no. <laughs> it's a, it's... Oh, no, we put you in AFK, AFK. didn't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll right, turn that on. going to be a thing. That was me. That was me. I can... Uh, <laughs> Why does it think you're AFK? Uh, yeah, just chilling. Oh, jeez. I'm sorry, man. I'll fix that. Anyway, uh, we're talking about the water mechanics. How much of a lift right. were the water mechanics? Uh, yeah, so there was definitely a lot of unknowns uh, when it came to uh, just the... Oh, man. It is, it is really hard to describe the amount of... Uh, gotchas maybe i don't know the the right word mm -hmm. to, to describe it just the, the hurdles that were in the way mm. to to figure out how to make that that work because it's it's all sorts of stuff you don't think about so like for example when you go underwater uh you need to like your your the way that your handle or your character is handled is obviously very you know different um and mm -hmm. then also the the way that remote clients so people who aren't you who are looking at you mm -hmm. um the information that they receive needs to be uh needs to be set up in a, in a certain way uh, mm -hmm. so that the simulations are accurate and then yeah so when uh for example uh just one of the bugs with uh turret gunners being able to to fire underwater mm -hmm. um or there's like a bug where you're like oh, okay well if you if you have a vehicle and then you switch the gunner seat and let somebody else drive it um, you can mm -hmm. just fire your, your weapon underwater, like Ooh. that sort of stuff is all, <laughs> is all due to, um, just the, the weird, you know, the interactions that we have when it comes to the, the server and the client and yeah, there are a lot you know, of like owns the little holes and... to be like, is this, is this ready? Is this ready? Is this ready? Is this mm -hmm. waterproof? Is this waterproof? You know? Right. Yeah. There, there's all sorts of stuff like that. And then when it came mm -hmm. to the, the audio, um, just needing to be different, uh, like that, that was a whole, there was a lot of tech that went into that. Um, hmm. to to make it work and uh yeah and like you you know when you, when you hear like the, the audio dropout bugs and, and that sort of thing mm -hmm. um which was a big issue on the first two play tests uh of uh of osher i remember just yeah. audio being yeah totally silent um or you know not being able to hear much we you know just having to figure out oh what could be causing this um well uh you know, like there's there's a bunch of different angles to approach this problem from and uh yeah so tried some stuff and luckily um turned out well just there's just so much stuff that you you wouldn't expect even that, like particle effects okay well you know if a um if a bullet enters the water then it needs to then change to mm -hmm. use a different trail after it hits the water um and that was like a, a whole thing that needed to be set up um the uh one of the team members who did our particle effects by my estimation made more particle effects over the last in 2021 that then many games would receive at launch <laughs> uh just that's that's my my estimation i could totally be wrong but between oh, the no. uh you're talking about the uh, nso so their entire arsenal yeah new you know muzzle mm -hmm. effects um you know bullet case injections and just the you know uh, yeah, projectiles yeah. and that sort of thing yeah, ignore and then the, some of the one-off weapons uh, like the scorpion you know had, had new particle effects and of course all the vehicles um you know with the, with the dervish and the chimera Mm -hmm. new vehicle uh, effects and uh you know same thing for audio in many respects it was just it's so much and then you know the, toward the end of the year all the water mechanics on the top of it mm -hmm. so it's a lot like team put in work i'm very Price of ambition yeah they're they're so good i love my yeah. team yeah i am i feel proud to be a planet side player in 2022 I don't know if there are a lot of other gamers out there who feel the same way I do, but it's just 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 it's just coming from me. Like, you want? I consider Plasma to kind of be like one of my home games. You know, I try not to be too much of a mono gamer these days. It's a thing I have to resist. Get out there, try new things. I played a single player game, Outer Wilds, over the holidays. That was lovely. 
fantastic experience. Highly recommend it. But I always want to come back to my like kind of live services games with the big communities where I get to bounce off of people and see the world change. Um, mm -hmm. Have all these these weird interactions that in some way uh, mirror uh, the wider world and the way we operate in it. I find that so intoxicating. And uh, it is so cool to be able to look at, at like a home game and be like, look at this cool stuff that's going on. So that when when you tell someone that you play Planet Side or a coworker, let's say, like for example, I just started a new job and it's a startup, so there's plenty of gamers. What games do you play? Oh, I play Planet Side. Oh, let me look this up. Oh, they have these 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 fleet carriers. That looks cool. Oh wow, there's there's an underwater mechanic that looks pretty fun, which is a totally different story than the same kind of conversation happening, say, like in 2018. Hmm. And I think that's really cool. Yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> so much. There's so because much of you and all the hard work of the team, man. I'm trying to give you a compliment. I I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. No, the, the <laughs> I've, I've had all of. Come uh, on, like a chat. We yeah. can let Rel take a compliment, yeah, right? right? Are we gonna allow uh, that? Is it okay if Rel feels complimented for a second? Can we allow this? The team is great. They yeah, a great job. Yes, Rel and on and the team that he <laughs> stop it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. Well, I'm glad. Thank you. Yeah, and I know. Look, you're going to see all kinds of messaging from everyone, but I've heard from a lot of people who um, maybe feel like their voice doesn't belong in the Daily Planet side. You know, social media scroll, and um, I think there's especially with Osher. It feels like there's something special happening. Um, so I just wanted to be sure that you heard that. Word. Okay. Water mechanics. Um, so, uh, anything else you want to say about water? It's wet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, one of the things that I thought when I was playing Osher is, um, that it was a little bit of a shame that the water mechanics weren't pushed a little harder. I thought to mm. myself, oh, there's this cool new thing. And there's underwater weapons, but like, why why aren't there really any, any underwater objectives? Why isn't the game drawing me to fight underwater, to be underwater a little bit more? I'm guessing it was because you weren't wanting to push it too far. But then I saw in the roadmap that y'all just put out a couple days ago for 2022, mm -hmm. um, that there's more on the horizon, more stuff coming. Naval vehicles. Something a lot fun. of people in the community have fantasized about for years. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you, whenever you commit, so new continent, uh, new water mechanics. If you also had to do all the all the fighting underwater, mm. uh, hey, you don't know if players are going to like it. Like, yep. obviously, you know, players were, you know, as far as sentiment was concerned, chomping the bit about wanting to to fight under or water and yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, but that's another like, you know, X amount of months of development mm -hmm. to get right. And mm -hmm. we don't know if you actually like are going to be excited about that. Uh, I think with what we've seen so far, it's kind of a it's a it's a little bit further justification for like, OK, yeah, we can we can spend some time on this um, and just even answering the or like asking the question, OK, if we were to spend some time on this, how much longer would it take us to develop, you know, is, is something that needed to take place kind of either during or like the actual execution of, uh, of Osher or after, I mean, it, it did happen during the execution, but, um, but after we got some sort of validation from the community that this sure. is something that they wanted. Uh, and you don't know until the rubber meets the road. So mm -hmm. like now that's kind of like out there, um, like we still, you know, don't have water on a bunch of other continents, right? It's just like, there's mm -hmm. a little bit on Nezimir. There's a little bit of the edges of stuff. Um, so uh, outside of, of that, you don't also want to, to commit a whole bunch of time to to a singular content that players are you know playing one fifth of the time, mm -hmm. uh, unless unless you know it's either gonna um, not as not going to be as difficult as you you expect, or not going to take as long, or you kind of know where the boundary box is. Like sure. if there was a lot of unknowns at the start, and we were just like, oh yeah, no, we're going to commit to you know, doing water mechanics, it's going to be awesome. And then we hit all the same roadblocks that we hit with Osher. It would have been a much bigger ask, would have probably been 
sure. much further delayed. And the balance that we need to, to strike is like, how much can you offer to, to sc- still get people excited, um, to still give them something that feels like they've, they've got, you know, a substantial amount of, of value and something that they can kind of like learn over time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and compared to like what you, what you could do. Amazing. Maybe phrasing that a little bit poorly, but it's, it's just like at the end of the day, it's a risk reward or, yeah. um, or just a return on investment even for the amount sure. of, of time spent. And you, Another... you want to try to reduce. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah. Like we, obviously what we're doing is, is ambitious regardless. Uh, so any way that we can kind of just, uh, create some surety, is that a word? It's a word, right? Why not? Sure. Okay. Um, assurance that we uh, are doing the right thing is it's important to uh, yeah b- before moving ahead I think what you're talking about is is a here's a term that I hear thrown around a lot working out at a startup is MVP minimum viable product which sure. is sounds a little cynical when you put it when you spell it out but the truth mm. is it is it's kind of like identifying what the the best iteration is because what I heard you describe about when I was saying, hey, it's a shame we don't have even more water stuff is, well, right. we want to be sure we're iterating properly because mm-hmm. you know when you're making something that there's some uncertainty. And the question is, how much uncertainty are you willing to bite off in exchange for whatever the vision is? And I hear that right. you've made sort of a, you and the team made a, 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 a cautious but still confident choice to say, we're doing this continent that's going to have all this water with this new mechanic but we're going to not really force people into the water for the most part and just let right. them kind of get used to it. Like dip their toes in metaphorically. For sure. Um, yeah, it had to be interesting. Like the water had to be compelling enough that there would be some desire to interact with it. Mm-hmm. And I think like, in my opinion, based on the, the you know, just the, the play that I've seen and like the feedback that I've, uh, that I see from the community, you know, obviously there, there is an interest right now. It does create like a new dynamic when it comes to vehicles in particular, less so the infantry, it's more just cumbersome. Um, but, uh, and the vehicle yeah, interactions like that, are fun. If you're infantry underwater, it feels like a mistake. Uh, it, it does a little bit. Yeah. It's what it is, is, uh, it's a good like, oh, reason God, to how jump did I get off here? a bridge yeah. and then redeploy. Um, yeah, sure. You know, like yeah. without hitting the ground. Um, and, but that's, you know, just another, uh, facet of the continent, like where if if we if we were just like, you know, don't really think people are going to interact with the water enough, like we would have not gone with Osher, right? We would have created X other continent sure. uh, or just something with more land. Um, mm-hmm. And that, that would have totally been fine too. But we were confident in with the uh, with the with the direction that we were going to launch with mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to where like, okay, well, this is, you know, the foundation is still interesting. People are still going to get excited. Um, and we can build on it afterwards and come 2022, mm-hmm. like that's where the end comes in. So mm-hmm. sure. it's sure. a, it's a decent place to be iteration. In my opinion is way better than, uh, going all in and then seeing a failure. Mm. I mean, you, it's, it's hard, to, it's hard to argue, um, with, uh, yeah, like you said, minimum viable product. Uh, yeah. Yeah, not sure where to, is, where to take this thought, it, but but yeah. is that a lesson learned for for you and the team, or is it something you feel like you've always tried to do? Uh, always, I you know I say always tried to do, um, mm. but there has also been plenty of times where we had wanted to follow up, and then never been able to achieve that. Mm. So NSO is a good example of like okay, we put out this this new faction back in two thousand eighteen or whatever it was. Uh, man, time is a time is a blur. Um, <laughs> and then meant to iterate on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that didn't happen you know, for it. And then we just did like a massive update here in, uh, in 20 last, last year, last year, last year, 2021 oh, was last year. Uh, yep. And, uh, ideally that's, that's not how it would have happened. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's, I mean, that's what comes down to like, like resource constraints. Mm-hmm. You know, um, actually, yeah, yeah. So yeah. ideally iteration would be better, right? Just that the constant, uh, improvement. And I think yeah. that's, that's the direction that we, 
we should go. And I think that we've been getting much better about it lately. I mean, all of 2021 was about like revisiting some older systems and trying to like plug the holes mm -hmm. or just, you know, shore up the cracked foundation. Uh, 2022 is still going to be about um, like uh, polish um, the game and kind of like solidifying it. There's got there's a lot of loose threads that need to be kind of like, you know, tied, tied together. Uh, and I'm sure that'll continue to be the case into some distant future, because uh, that's that's kind of just the the way of things sometimes. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, yeah, I've heard you a, talk about talk about some of the things that went in in 20, uh, 2020, like look, revisiting some of our old previous conversations, mm -hmm. uh, like the the mission system, the campaign system, um, some of the stuff outfit wars, mm -hmm. right? The initial iterations. It's like we're getting in really important systems. That are needed that are going to be the things that that that, that are the structure that the content is within right. in the in the future that's uh i seem like it's the only way to do things doesn't it so 2020 yeah we like you said uh well campaigns um came out at the end of the year and then uh the mission system along with that mm -hmm. it, it's yeah building blocks um we i feel like Planetside 2 has only had enough foundation in, in the past. So like you're talking about um, maybe, you know, 20, 2019 and prior mm -hmm. uh, has only had enough foundation to support itself as a, as a game that would have had to remain what it is. Um, it's a poor way of. So in order to do it. bigger and better things, you need to shore up the foundation. You need to expand the foundation right. a bit. And that's mm -hmm. what those kinds of systems do. Exactly. So my my like view over the course of is, is over the course of multiple years. Mm -hmm. So again, 2020, you know, implement the building blocks, 2021, show up the crack foundations, 2022, you know, polish. Um, now that we have missions, now that we have campaigns, we can do cool things. Some mm -hmm. sometimes it's a little bit uh, you know, more than we expect. So campaigns, we so we, we had great ambitions, Shattered Warp Gate, awesome, um, made a bunch of mistakes not so awesome invested so much time not awesome like you know trying how, how to, hard to was get it? our end result it was very difficult mm. um yeah so like in uh just the beginning of 2021 that was that was a problem uh mm. for us we, you know containment site release and then like so ps4 as an example still doesn't have like we had to turn off esmir hit unnecessary or un Oof. um foreseen roadblocks you know, with that, the hardware constraints on that platform in particular, and spent a lot of time trying to fix it. Mm. Uh, things like um, Outfit Wars was another like building block that we didn't get enough iteration on, and it just requires a big commitment. You know, like okay, well, we had to run a season, yeah. and the mistakes of that season are just going to be there for the next yeah. X amount of weeks. You know, until the season's yeah, done. I, I want to get back to that, but I'm really okay, interested we'll in in campaign stuff and what the lessons mm. learned were because. When you and I talked, I can't remember if the Shadow Warp Gate had come out or if it was forthcoming. Um, I think it was forthcoming still. And I was pretty yeah. excited about things like Sanctuary. I was pretty excited mm -hmm. about seeing some mission and lore stuff because I am an old school MMO guy. Um, I like the virtual world aspect of these experiences. I know a lot of people just want to get in and frag, and I respect that too. But a lot of people, and I think especially people who maybe aren't part of the conversation all the time, really resonate with that kind of stuff so i just wanted to get your pulse checked on like how you think campaigns are going um mm. the distant shores campaign seems like a long distance away from shattered warp gate in terms of what it had us doing um and in terms of the, the level of polish um all in a pretty good way i particularly like the way that uh it took us through um trying to get familiarized with some of these new vehicle types like the deliverer prototype the the Lodestar prototype, some of these new mechanics, do things in the water. Um, I think that that's a pretty good, uh, a cool way to use those those, the, those campaigns. And you were, I think, watching my stream when I was going through the experience of the, the under, underground base. I don't know if you saw, the door. You saw um... me getting corpse camped. <laughs> you, you, you saw me getting slaughtered by the TR Max camping the top of the thing. Um, yeah. Did you expect people to do that, by the way? Uh, yeah, it was inevitable. Um, hopefully it's like one of those things where it's just like, well, this could be interesting. Hopefully it'll get people to, uh, to band together to then uh -huh. go down as a group to complete uh -huh. the campaign. Realistically, what happens is like, I'm a post on Reddit. 
<laughs> just, yeah. think that's, that's the gist of it. Those um, things are so interesting. Way less friction to do that than to actually play the game together. Um, oh my god! Like I, I feel like th- those moments are. It's funny because there are moments when it, when when I'm getting mowed down, life after life, where I feel like this is a bad design. This is a fuck up. Mm. Like this is this is terrible. How could anyone do this? Think right. it's a good idea. And then there are moments where I'm like, oh, we we overcame it. Like we got it done. Me and this this ragtag bunch of people. Like there's even cross faction. Uh, 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 I think uh, collaboration to get it done, if I remember mm. right. And w- w- when I actually got through the hallway and I see for it the max, I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> I was so pumped. <laughs> I was, <laughs> oh man, yeah. I, I feel like that, that was more viscerally uh, 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 ready to come out than I expected. But well, that's I was, an MMO moment. It right? was a moment. Like that's an MMO, like social, yeah. you know, moment. Like that. that's what MMOs do, like that, do best, I, I think, is create those, you know, very, <clears throat> um, like uh, codependent is not the great word, but like, you know, just fostering that social interaction. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it, a lot of times it comes from adversity or it comes from stuff that's uh, just unexpected, like World of Warcraft, you know, if we're getting, uh, uh, do you remember you know, way back in vanilla and just like raiding crossroads? Like there's, there's no real reason to do that. <laughs> um, or if you're the, if you're the, the rogue, who's just like, like camping crossroads and just like killing, you know, new players, um, I'm yeah, definitely yeah. guilty of it, you know? And then it's just like, eventually people are going to hunt you down, uh-huh. um, you know, and then kick you out. And like, but that's part of the fun. Like, yeah, it's mm-hmm. kind of, you know, sometimes it's a little bit crappy, especially to be on the receiving end. But it's as long as it's not crappy every time. Mm-hmm. You know, as long as there is, uh, it's an it's a novel experience mm-hmm. versus one that is just hammering at you every day. Then there's some value in that. Mm-hmm. Um, it totally depends on what you're interested in, as far as like being a player of the game. And Planet Side Two is a interesting melting pot because you know we have such a spectrum of, of different types of uh archetypes of players right um but uh but campaigns were, were meant to kind of cater to the people who are hopefully more social um and hopefully more uh interested in in the non well uh interest in something that lives outside of the the normal experience yeah or just the moment to moment yeah yeah in the the parts of the experience that make it feel like a real like a world like uh, a virtual world in that sense a place where you go to be rather than uh you know uh rather than a site that you aim down yeah which is not a bad thing either but it's just uh yeah yeah well i i found it to be that way i'm sure a lot of other people did too uh and you were i think watching as i went into the back and i saw the planet side two's very first door which is very exciting <laughs> Very, very exciting to see a door in Planet Side Two. Yes. By the way, by the way, I remember how shitty doors were in Planet Side One. So I'm completely sympathetic with the fact that there are no doors in this game. Um, they were terrible. People are always shooting through them. You would hack a door, go to walk through, and then it wouldn't open uh, all the time. Uh, so, uh, but it was very exciting to go through a door, and uh, there was a mini moment. I think a mini moment where it felt like a little bit like like a sci-fi RPG, like a Mass mm-hmm. Effect or like a I don't know what other prey or something like that, and that was that was a neat little moment. We had a conversation about that door. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Oh no, and uh, on the dev team. Oh 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 uh, oh. Yeah, we're we're trying to figure out like, like okay, well they're going to have to come down here for this part of the the campaign, mm-hmm. and it's like okay, well you know maybe it should be a shield. Yeah, well if it's a shield, you know people just like dip the toe, like they'll just do the back and forth thing and kind of just mm-hmm. camp, and that you won't be able to deal with them until they're like on that part of the campaign and then can go through the shield I'm like oh, okay well it can't be a shield uh well you know maybe it's a door that that like lifts up and it's like okay well if if we if we do that turn it into an npc give it some lua or scripting that allows it to lift like how are you going to prevent people from who aren't on that part of the campaign from from just you know mm-hmm. going down, down there mm-hmm. it's like oh okay well can't do that um well let's you know make it like an interact uh that you can kind of like you know move move through the doors like ah eh, well it kind of breaks the immersion and it's just like it's like maybe it does like but like at the same time there's there's other i don't know it's just it's sort of like like i kind of expect that level of of uh of jank almost and also this happens yeah. in other rpgs yeah so yeah i don't yeah. know it was yeah each it was each room is, is like a different thing you teleport into and out of the door is just like a portal right. you go through exactly it's a familiar yeah. convention you don't need to see I the thing so. crack open and walk through <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah, that was cool. So yeah, that, that, that's that's cool to hear that about the conversation happening on your side about what it what it could be. Um, you think you'll make another door in the future? Um, I would definitely. Oh, okay. Well, I don't want to commit to anything. <laughs> mm, this is the real shit. You know, but I think it would be. I think it would be really cool to do um, doors that are NPCs that open and, and close and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's totally reasonable. Downside of of doing it that way, however, is because or is that can't do it on just the client like if the player approaches it and the door lifts for them because then the right. the people on the other side have the same sort of issue where like you know when it when somebody pops out of a turret and then they don't appear for a second and then yep. you know you get blasted and whatever um yeah so you don't want that experience um if you run it just on the server then you are like then it's synced between players mo- for the most part but is then it adheres to like the server performance at the time and you've seen mm-hmm. orbital strikes take many many seconds to go off during times of high latency can you imagine just like waiting there for a door to like you just don't know when it's going to open um i mean it could be amusing but also just could suck uh so like, yeah. there's a lot of considerations when it comes to this sort of stuff mm-hmm. yeah well I'll, I'll i'll be very excited for what doors open for us in the, in the <laughs> okay. future so i'll be staying tuned for that <laughs> yeah so future of campaigns um, I guess we can plan to see see more of this. Is this is this working in your opinion? I so when it comes to campaigns, there's a number of things that have changed over time. Okay. Um, like the first is just um, during when we first released Shatter Warp Gate, campaign came out. Chapter one um, came out. Had a lot of uh, developmental effort put into it. Uh, we totally we like immediately realized that uh, that's unsustainable. Like it takes too much time and effort to actually get a campaign that is like super fleshed out mm-hmm. and has like all the bells and whistles that we want. And we had to make a lot of compromises and it kept making compromises that like with each subsequent chapter. Because mm-hmm. um, in order for the campaign system to to continue to be uh, something that like is worth doing for for us, return on investment wise, uh, we have to we have to reduce the amount of overhead um, to to make the campaign work. So we've been like trying to figure out ways to where like. Well, I, I used to try to figure out ways, but also trying to figure out like what the community wants. Community, mm-hmm. it, when they when uh, Shadow Warp Gate first came out, created a lot of cool you know interactions up you know the northeast in the Shadow Warp Gate area, mm-hmm. um, and that all of that was fueled by I mean, despite the lamenting over like carrots and that sort of thing, that was because of the carrots, right? Like that people were were having those like really cool fights with one another. It was because mm-hmm. everybody had sort of an objective. Uh huh up in that that place uh, and carrot. there was also right uh and there was also personal incentive uh which is the um a really strong motivator because uh, you you had to complete the step if you wanted to progress the campaign and then like, get the cool thing that we, we put at the end so uh so at some point players are going to go up there and then when it's you know the first weekend and everybody's doing it yeah, you, you see that yeah. that really cool uh, cool experience. But yeah. then it tapers off and then it becomes whatever. Um, when it came to uh, these smaller sort of like story-based elements of, uh, of the campaign, I, I feel like we had to make some compromises there too. For mm. So sometimes just like running around um, talking to people is you can't keep track of the story when people are shooting at you. Yep. So, you know, and, and just even the, the sheer amount of reading in general, um, is still currently, I, I feel like, probably too much mm-hmm. uh, for people to, you know, yeah, it's just a, there's a lot going on. Um, so we, we've we kind of started to to put NPCs in areas where you're probably, oh, like some of the things that we learned too is like, ah, oh, don't send people back to Sanctuary every single time, you know, you complete a major <laughs> objective, you know, just do it on the continent. Like they're down yeah. there, they're playing the game, just like update yeah. them, kick them to the next mission. Saw that like, with those, those sorts of things. Mm-hmm. Right. We're, we're a lot of lessons that we kind of learned over time. Subtle things that maybe, you know, people won't like, uh, like visually uh, appreciate, but it will make their experience less frustrating overall. So we, we've gotten a, a lot of that down. Um, I feel like uh, we definitely need to find a better way to to inject story uh, into into a campaign so that the people who are interested in lore are able to uh, to digest it and they're able to feel as if they they have some sort of connection to the experience. Because right now mm-hmm. it's uh, with our, our most recent um, campaign, it was it was definitely very like um, go here, do this, talk to this person, talk to this person. It was just like a, a, a lot of fetch questy stuff, which I, I think is fine to some degree. Um, but we, 
we like intentionally geared that experience toward like, okay, well, let's just teach them about OSHER or let's right. teach them about, you know, using the, the different types of vehicles, let's teach them about water mechanics. So the first thing is just like, okay, jump in the water yeah. is one of the first missions of chapter two, right? Go down there, do the thing. Um, and then, you know, just, so we're using it, this campaign more as a teaching tool uh, rather than a, um, a way to, to really like hammer on a, a super, um, like an involved story. Mm -hmm, and I mm -hmm. think that there's a little bit of learning that we can do um, to, to find a better balance. Um, so this year we're going to try to implement a codex system that has mm. just a, you know, a bunch of, of information, mostly on like game mechanics and um, mm -hmm. empire specific, you know, lore and that sort of thing, but also gives us the opportunity to, to invest more heavily in the lore side of things too, for the players who are more interested in that. So like you mm -hmm. may, when you complete a mission, like it unlocks codex entry in your, you know, uh, codex so that you can go back and, and read it um, later kind of at your leisure. Uh, yeah. Cool. So I, there's, yeah, I it's, like it's all, it's all very nuanced um, as far as like what we're actually learning from the experience, but we are learning things. <laughs> no, I, I am noticing that um, just from playing this campaign. I noticed that um, I also had to blitz through the one prior to it because uh, mm -hmm. I wasn't playing planet side when it came out. Um, and that was cool too. I like the idea of a codex. Um, I I gotta uh, throw a word in there for my, my infantry homies though, who see something like the codex and go like, "What are we doing?" So help me help me make the help me make the pitch for the codex because I really like the idea. I can come up mm -hmm. with my with, with with my 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 like defense of it. I like it goes for me. It goes back to like the world, and even if you're not reading the codex yourself. There are creators who are reading the codex and using it to make content. There are people that you know who maybe don't talk about it, who are, who are going there for, for that kind of stuff. There are people who are going to make choices to play the game in a certain way because they found a little bit of inspiration in the codex they weren't expecting. Maybe an engineer yeah. character that they connect with that's like, oh, I just put an ass point on my engineer. I've always wanted to try uh, LMG engineer to see what that feels like. And it's these little bits of inspiration and connectivity that leads you in, into opening doors you wouldn't expect, and sometimes not not even consciously. And it all comes from aping the complexity of the actual world around us, where not everything that's around us is immediately relevant to us all the time. Um, and that's okay. Yeah, I think that last sentence is, is really kind of key. So the, the codex system, like it shouldn't be for everyone. Uh, you know, if you've been playing this game for, for years, like, and you have a certain style of gameplay, like maybe you don't care about lore, but mm -hmm. it's not for you if that's the case, right? Um, mm -hmm. The, I, I think anytime that we create features, we can't, or like we, we're either gearing them toward a certain um, audience, but certainly not toward everybody. Uh, we'll try to make things, you know, relevant to the game kind of uh, as a, as a whole, but um, but again, our archetypes are just so scattered, and people are so invested in their specific styles of play right. that uh, that not everything is going to uh, appeal to everyone. Um, for the codex in particular, uh, there's a, a few benefits I feel like that are that are immediate. Um, first of which is when it comes to new players, people learn in different ways. Um, like the the tutorial, you know, whether it's good or, or bad or, or what have you, is you know can be debated but uh the people who run through the tutorial aren't necessarily going to be um like not everybody's going to re receive the same sort of learnings from that sure. uh, some people will just run through it they just you either won't hear either won't care or will wander around and just totally not pay attention but mm -hmm. something that they might be something to or might be more amenable to is i'm probably not using that word right um, is going into their uh, the navigation. Maybe they just like to kind of like tinker around and see things, mm -hmm. you know, and then they can stumble upon the, the codex and kind of just like just do reading. Um, I certainly did in Mass Effect when I was done um, with the game. Like I just mm -hmm. like, you know, what else, what else is going on? You know, and just uh, when I had some downtime, I was kind yeah. of just like, you know, exploring, right? Poking at stuff, uh, being in the world. Right. And... So when when it comes to new player experience in general, just giving more avenues for learning is ultimately it can't it can't do us any harm. 
So why not? There's no silver bullet to solve it. So let's just try to give people more tools mm -hmm. and, and hope that one of them you know, resonates with somebody. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one. Um, the next is uh, lore in general, you know, like we said with the, the campaigns and that sort of thing, just being able to have that stuff somewhere that's readily available mm -hmm. is good. Um, like, you know, who are the factions? Uh, VS is purple and also spandex, uh -huh. you know, but outside of that, like what else matters? What um, else you got? Yeah. Exactly. So having uh, like a timeline uh, too would be cool that, that yeah. lives in game. Plenty of the lore lives outside. Uh, we have articles and articles that are on the, the Planet Side 2 webpage and, and that sort of thing. Just right. you know, short stories that have been released in that uh, in that vein. But uh, if we can inter or bring some of that into the game, uh, people might just think like, oh, okay, well, that's that's cool. Um, yeah. I didn't know that. Like, uh, you know, again, like, you know, in Mass Effect, when you're learning about uh, the fact that uh, Asari can't have or like, you know, just how they mate. Okay, that's a really weird, very specific uh, thing that I just brought up. But no like, surprise. that's something that... <laughs> <laughs> right. Ah, um, proper gamer yeah. here. Let's go. I'm just just in it for the waifus. Um, <laughs> but the uh, yeah, just those sorts of aspects um, are you know some things are just easier to digest when you're just chilling, mm. and you know you're just just able to to read outside of a, a combat zone. So I, yeah, I hopefully a, there's some benefits, like a lower tempo, like a slower tempo, something exactly. that you can't have when you're in the middle of PvP. Right. And Sanctuary has kind of given us a, like, that's the low tempo social zone yeah. just in general. Right. So like while you're there um, and you're all, while you're waiting in queue for something, it's like, yeah, you know, give it a look. You know, see what's what. If you got a little blinking indicator, it says like, oh, you got a new codex entry or whatever. You know, maybe mm -hmm. you find that interesting. I like to see Sanctuary getting filled out over time. Me too. It's been cool to Hopefully. watch. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully we'll do more with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've actually, um, when I've stream been streaming lately, I find myself deliberately walking to the missions terminal rather than mm -hmm. hitting the button on my UI. It's like, you know, be in the world. Be in the right. world. Walking over to the warp terminal. I discovered the the little the, the terminals that, that make you join combat. Um which I, I didn't realize they were there for a little while. Uh, well, we just added it in the new player experience um, update, and then there was some broken stuff, and then we fixed right. it. But it's for most people, it's not going to be something that they recognize. But for new players, it is a part of, like, we want you to figure joint combat out. Well, right? that's like, what you that's do when you're a steps. new player, right? You look right. to see what is around, and that tells you mm -hmm. what you can be doing. Um, I think it's cool. I think it's cool. Um. Anything else about the future of campaigns and missions? Uh, well, I mean, I could definitely go on forever, but we don't have forever. <laughs> so don't we, though? We Didn't you sign for up for sure. a six-hour long podcast, Rob? Uh, you know, based on previous... <laughs> or based on my track record. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I think of my... How long was ours? Um, I think it was just over three. It, yeah. Yep. Just over three. Which I'll let you know is too much. <laughs> yeah. Too much for me. Yeah. 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 Well, it's it's late it's for both of us. We, we both have had a work yeah. day before we sat down. So we need to mm -hmm. honor that. But what I actually want to do is take a short break. Um, sure. So everyone, stretch real quick, grab a drink, and uh, we'll be right back. And we're back. I'm Deeg talking with Rel on the Deeg podcast. We just talked all about the watery continent of Osher and how PVE and Planetside is going with campaigns. But now it's time to move on to very serious competitive business. Now I need to heap more praise upon you, Rel, because you've done something that I think was it was probably very difficult to do, but that I really appreciate, which is announced on the 2022 roadmap that the future of Outfit Wars is, number one, returning, and number two, going to a one-versus-one one format. I want to ask you, what was the process like for you deciding to transform Outfit Wars from what it was, which was a 1v1v1 classic planet side, kind of one representative from each faction experience, to what you announced in the roadmap with it going 
to 1v1 and using the Nexus map, which we've been teased by in the past. So I'll yield mm. the floor. What was that like? So there was definitely like an outcry of, you know, uh, oh, the Alpha War should be 1v1. Um, and that's something that we heard very early. It's just wasn't easy to do that and also wasn't reflective of the planetside experience so initially like going into alpha wars we wanted you know it to be a 1v1v1 um like the base experience something that mm -hmm. you know everybody understands um but everybody has the same goal for so like when you look at um uh well i guess oh, <laughs> I was going to say server smash, but I'm pretty sure that's against two factions. Um, mm. But uh, when everybody has the same... So alerts are, are a better example. When yeah. everybody has the same motivation, and every faction knows that the goal is to win the alert, the gameplay is different than just in the sandbox and you're kind of just roaming around doing whatever. Uh, same thing for, for Outfit Wars. When everybody is in alignment of what the goal should be, then that's when things become competitive. Yeah. Uh, and being able to, I think, take your outfit into Outfit Wars um, and fight just, you know, with people that you know, um, give players an opportunity to to practice their skills um, and then, you know, pit them against just the the other rival factions that they would normally see throughout the, the continent, just, you know, in normal play, but in a, a localized space where everybody knows what the stakes are. That is, a, it's a really compelling uh, thought. And I think that the experimentation that we did to get there was was all valuable, um, and also like it was it was just something that needed to be iterated on. Like we could not have put Outfit Wars out in a one v one state to start, hmm. uh, even if that was the, the best thing. Everybody agreed upon it; um, it wouldn't make sense. Like the development time was just too much. So mm -hmm. like if we're going to invest, you know, six to eight months trying to start this system from the ground up. Mm -hmm. You know, with with the question being like, okay, what are we actually going to get at, out of it? Who's going to participate in it? Um, mm -hmm. You know, what's the, the lead up going to be? Can we sustain the reward cadence and that sort of thing? Too many questions that we yeah, don't have hard. solid answers to. Mm -hmm. So, uh, putting and you it felt out like the one v one v one had a mm -hmm. solid answers to most of those questions. We know what we think we can expect right. from this. Mm -hmm. The uh, where I think it falls down, and I, I think many people will agree with me, is just the the scoring like the the format where yeah people were playing kingmaker uh trying to like because the objective wasn't to win it was not to lose or to to make somebody else lose right so mm. that you can get second place at the very least uh so that's it's a little bit problematic um yeah. one thing that like i think that there are ways that you can manipulate the um the scoring so that it's it's more so like you could always do like a comeback mechanic where the underdog is or like whoever has the most points is sure. the, should be the focus of your a, attention. A go for broke um, mechanic, something like that. Yeah, you could you could do stuff like that. And then I, I think it would work. I think that we could potentially with enough iteration solve the problems. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if the community would be willing to tolerate that much iteration. Mm. So that, there is like a, a question too. Um, people obviously have an excitement for Outfit Wars. You know, they, they want it. Um, you saw it in uh, earlier in uh, was it this past year? Mm -hmm. uh, we did Outfit Wars. It caused a lot of drama. Um, we made a lot of yeah. improvements, and actually even made some improvements to the system after uh, Outfit Wars uh, Alpha Cycle Three was over. We made some improvements to uh, to like how rosters work and that sort of thing that you guys haven't seen yet. We sure. made them. Didn't touch Outfit Wars again because we had other stuff that we we're doing yeah, um, yeah. for the rest of the year. So no more accidental signups. Uh, right. Yeah. Like that sort of thing. I, th I think that one, was that actually resolved uh, prior to No, but we have it resolved now. Um, okay. <laughs> so at the very least, so sure. that sort of thing. Um, well, that was the first time we saw the, the, the tournament bracket system. Right. Right. Yeah. That was a big test. So yeah, there was, there was a lot going on um, in the first quarter uh, of this year and uh, a lot of learning that we did, a lot of improvements that we've, we've already made. But uh, when we go into uh, the summer of this year, like we could have said like, okay, we're bringing out Fit Wars back. The format's going to be a little bit different. still going to be 3v3. And uh, and here's how the scoring is going to work. And that would have been something. Uh, but the, the more concrete bet, now that we've done integration, now that we kind of have a better understanding and technology for, uh, for dealing with these um, 
so NSO obviously is a faction that floats between different factions and now we right. have the ability to align yourself and that sort of thing. Mm. Um, now that that sort of stuff is kind of in play, it's solidified. Um, we've made the decision to move NSO into a permanent faction, you know, instead of being their own thing that will give them the ability to participate in outfit wars, oh, cool. uh, all these sorts of things that are kind of right. Like leading up, um, to, to something greater. Uh, so now we're in a good place to say like, okay, do we want to bet on um, a 1v1v1 system that we could probably get it right with iteration or do we want to get or go with something that we we now have the technology for, um, we already have a map for, uh, and is something that is also desirable uh, and then just removes the problem of yeah. of people playing Kingmaker. You know, just the inherent like social stuff that yeah. we need to come up with gameplay mechanics to work around, which is always a weird place to be. Mm. Like it, trying to, to manipulate behavior um in a, a social based game for the sake of gameplay very difficult to do yeah um and would vary server to server as well um when people are playing after wars in the 1v1v1 format and we're just like doing it in that the, the way that we intended you know very sportsmanlike you know everybody's trying to everyone's win. playing to win it was great mm -hmm. yeah and when everybody was playing to win amazing mm -hmm. so much fun to be had yeah uh but when you you do something that's just a little bit uh askew and the you know the gameplay and then, honestly and supports then that behavior monkey see then, monkey do people start to learn that that's right. a way to play and yeah also sprinkle no, no, into no. that the the kinks of the tournament bracket and mm -hmm. signing up and yeah. th there ends up being this this community story that just eats the thing and mm. despite the fact that, that if you look at it in terms of like participation look at it in terms of like viewership on social media it was a real moment for the game Yep. Um, there's actually a lot of like bitter fumes that seem to came come out the backside on the community side. And maybe I'm overstating that because I'm seeing it from the community side, but I imagine that there was a, a solid incentive to try to make sure that that kind of thing wouldn't happen again. Right. Yeah. It's just not, yeah, it, it comes back to like part of the safer and safer, um, sort of path was, you know, let's just eliminate the potential for that drama. I'm sure new stuff will come up. Yeah. Um, but if we can, you know, let's, let's just get it solid. We know that it works now. We have the technology. We can we can definitely pull this off. Yeah, it'll take work um, to do that. And once it's set up, uh, we'll have, you know, it'll it'll be like a, a building block that we that we know is concrete. Yeah. Uh, or whatever good buildings are made out of. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> well, still uh, say concrete. That's fine. Right. Uh, yeah, so that's, yeah, a, a lot of the impetus behind that decision was, you know, was centered on not the, well, yeah, in some degree, you know, the community drama is just like, we don't have the overhead to deal with it either. Yeah. You know, if it, if we're, yeah, the fact that you had to it. come out and make, say a letter to the community it was and, so much. Yeah. and then, and then that's out there forever now. Um, yep. like that's, that's not a place you want to be. So, right. and the overhead is something I really appreciate. I've heard you said a couple of times, like we need to be very cognizant of the effort to these things we want to do. Um, if we have something like a codex, like a mission, like an outfit wars, like based on what we think it's going to do for the game, we know about what kind of effort it should take. Um, and if it starts to overflow, then suddenly it becomes a problem and things get delayed and things get pushed. And yeah your ability to move on and do the next great thing is, is compromised. And it's, that sucks, especially when you got a roadmap. Yes. This yeah. is going to be the year where no, no PC updates get delayed. <laughs> oh no, he said it. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. Totally a potential for delay. Totally a potential for things to, to change. Totally the <laughs> whatever, whatever disclaimer. Uh, but it's, it's funny. Like I, I very consciously went into it. I was like, can't have a repeat of last year. Like we got to, you know, I don't mm. want to push an update back for multiple months. Like it doesn't, it's not fun to do that. It's also problematic because, you know, marketing doesn't have enough time to like put out the, you know, the social media beats to get everybody like understanding of what's next. You know, it just makes it more difficult to, to plan from that perspective. Yeah. And then ultimately if something gets pushed back, then a cascading effect, it pushes other things back. Right. So, so this year's roadmap, very, very intentional. Um, I think we've done more uh, pre-planning this year 
than we have uh, in any year prior, at least that, that I've been on the team. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling optimistic about it. Hopefully don't crush anybody's dreams, including my own. <laughs> but we'll see. You never know. <laughs> I'm excited about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, think, I think that the, the decision to put out a roadmap is like interesting in and of itself. It says something, um, you know, I, I, um, I pay attention to a lot of other games and one of the ones I'm most plugged into is one called Guild Wars 2. I think I've mentioned to you before, but um, they went through a period uh, from 2019 to 2021 where things are pretty quiet communication wise from them. It wasn't really too sure what was going on with the game. They were still making content, but it wasn't too sure what the future the trajectory of the game was going to look like, um, what people could expect. Um, from you know uh, quarter to quarter and uh they came back last year and they said okay you know we have an expansion coming but what you don't know is that we got a bunch of other things going too and here's what you can expect and they said the communication is worth the risk what they said i thought that was so interesting and telling because it points out the fact that communication is a risk Mm mm-hmm and I'm sure that I, that is something that you are highly cognizant of. So I don't know how I feel about that particular statement. Ooh. Uh, yeah. So we have, we've kind of, um, you know, so last year things were, so if you look at, at the end of 2020, um, you know, Andy Seitz on stream, myself, uh, you know, we're, we're going through what, what 2021 is going to bring, mm-hmm. uh, lay out some things, you know, uh, the NSO, like, cause we knew that these were things that we wanted to do. Mm-hmm. We knew that these things were like things that we could do with the current team that we have. Um, but it's still very loose. Like we didn't, you know, give dates. Uh, we just kind of gave, uh, some general, uh, some general direction because putting out a roadmap, very risky thing to do. Things change. Uh, and whether or not it's worth the risk is something that I've been trying to figure out because when, when you, if the team changes, you know, we had a departure at the start of this year or at the Mm -hmm. start of, um, last year, right. You know, Andy, um, and then, you know, our, our tech director and, uh, just some, yeah, Yeah. things were a little bit tumultuous. Um, Mm -hmm. and the games industry in general, very tumultuous. So I, it, it took all of. 2021 i feel to gain like a uh to sort of like settle in to like like understand these are the team's capabilities this is their these are their desires um just you know like uh you know just want to make sure that they they feel like they're they're growing professionally or they feel like uh you know what they're working on is you know has has value and they feel good about it and that sort of thing um yeah and just kind of make like a general like sense of of the team, and, the the creative and long term needs of the people who are actually making the game. Exactly, because that's that's all very important, and that's obs- like that is opaque to most uh, to yeah. the players. The players just see the game, they just see the updates and that sort of thing. So when you you say like, "Hey, we're going to do this thing," um, and then players don't see that manifest, they don't care for them, about the reasons mm-hmm. for it so much as they do about the actual result. Oh, update got pushed back, um, or like this thing that we promised is not now you know going to be like i was super excited about that now i'm just angry about it um so it's it can be very risky and i think that if you've built up a habit of pushing back updates which i I feel like we have um over the past you know x amount of i mean actually over you know quite some time uh there's there's a thought that you can um you know get certainly get something out the door uh but is it is it exciting? Does it make the, the community feel uh, confident in what you have, you know, then released? Uh, does it make them excited for things that you could release? That's a, that is a, a behavior and um, a like a community culture that you need to cultivate over time. Mm-hmm. And so it's only worth the risk when you are confident enough at as a team to to be willing to take. <laughs> the uh, the setbacks that could be incurred right and earlier on i think that you know in 2021 in particular the safer bet for us or you know maybe even 2020 was to surprise you mm. like escalation surprise yeah um, it's the thing that we're doing right and and that <laughs> that worked well 
you know, some of the subsequent updates, you know, were a surprise, even Shadow Warp Gate surprise um, for the for the most part. And it's uh, it was easier to maintain a lack of communication um, mm -hmm. and less risky because we didn't know the state of the team. We didn't know the state of the game or like, you know, the, the community necessarily. You know, we didn't sure. know what escalation, what that tail was going to be. Uh, you know, how many people yeah. are going to, you know, fall off, you know, where is the, are we going to, you know, stagnate uh, the needs of the company? Is that going to change? All these things are just like, these are realities that all the game. Well, There's a lot of wanna, moving like, environmental conditions happening right. while you're yeah, making the are, game made. And when you put out an expectation, you're making a bet that certain conditions mm -hmm. are going to stay within certain boundaries, that things aren't going to move too much. So the, what the community should see, um, hopefully in that we are sharing a roadmap is hopefully um my confidence team's confidence in their ability to deliver something that, i mean that seems like people are excited about mm -hmm. uh so yeah so it's it's almost um it's almost more important for us uh than it is for the for the community uh to to get this sort of roadmap at least from that's yeah that's my my sort of stance on it is like we yeah. are we are good now. We feel comfortable now. We know what we did last year and what we were capable of doing. We know the missteps that we made. We understand a little bit more about how we should be scoping updates. We've kind of hit our stride. Hopefully, hopefully, this translates into what you'll see as a community yeah. through 2022. Yeah. It it sounds like you're working on fostering a relationship though. It sounds like you're working on building trust. Uh, yeah. 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 I think there's a lot of interesting parallels. And I've definitely been, I don't know, maybe it's, speak, it's speaking to the part of me that works hard on having good relationships personally. But it's hard. It is hard to be two different, let's say, entities. I don't want to call a corporation a person, but um out there in the world doing things suffering setbacks having unexpected things happen and try to maintain a certain baseline level of expectation and energy exchange um mm. what are we here for why what can we expect and how should we participate um all these things are so are so crazy and difficult to figure out uh it's taken me I've been married for almost a decade now, and I'm still figuring out little truths about how to make things go well, not because I don't have the best of intentions and not because there's not enough love in the equation, but because the skill of communicating it and executing on it and communicating when things change or might go wrong and finding ways to be kind about everything that happens is difficult. And that's all happening in private. What you're doing is happening in the public eye. And um, that's a whole other level of stakes, uh, probably several levels of stakes between what I'm talking about and what you're doing. So there's, yeah, there's certainly things that, um, you know, I feel I don't want to project my experience over other game studios, but uh, but I'm sure you've seen it in other games as well, where, you know, if 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 you don't say what somebody or what a community wants to hear, like that's, that's worse than, than trying to be transparent sometimes where, so it's, so, an example. so communication can be, so if I say that, you know, Hey, we're going to spend, you know, this year working on this mechanic that is maybe unfavorable on. So if I, if I say like, Oh yeah, no, we're going to double down on construction. Uh, cause Ooh. you know, it really needs a place in the game. Ooh. It's got to like, you know, whatever. Um, what would you think that the Reddit reaction would be versus, oh, man. you know, so even oh, if man. it does, it wouldn't matter, um, what, what the actual truth is, you know, which is the fact that a lot of people like construction. Yeah. And that um, it could be good know, for the game. That it could be good for the game, that there's a lot of potential there that we should definitely invest in it. Mm -hmm. Um, if I were to say that it wouldn't be favorable communication, uh, and, and that's, that's like a risk that, that you have to deal with. So sometimes it's, I do feel like it's better to, to say nothing and then leave the community pleasantly surprised yeah. at the, the results. So if we were working on a construction update in the background, we're not, um, 
and then like just hit you with that stuff, it would be it'd be cool. Like uh, you know, and people would be excited for it. I'm sure there would be a subset of the community that says like, why did they waste time doing this? But as long as we we're yeah. also releasing other stuff that you were interested in, mm-hmm. like it maybe wouldn't um, wouldn't sting so bad. So it's it's definitely like communication in in general is a very tricky. It's it's just it's just difficult, um, and mm-hmm. I, I feel like it is something that does have to be cultivated over time so that you can create a a certain type of language um, with your your community. Maybe not not specifically the the verbiage, the words, but uh, the things that you're willing to to convey should be something that they kind of ex well almost expect to be. Um, they they should expect to receive. Uh, I, so yeah, I, you I'm want to, to be sure that you're understanding the expectations right. of the person, the party you're relating to, and for that sure. you're you communicate with those expectations in mind. And for years, construction's been over here. It's been over here, doing its own thing. Some people love it, but especially if you're in an outfit that's trying to conquer the map or if you're an infantry player hopping from base to base to base, it you can more or less ignore it. Like my experience of construction before Osher was I tried to ignore it. And I was a little annoyed whenever I felt like I had to deal with it. I was like, mm. oh, like, ugh, player base, give me a break. Um, Osher has changed my mind by giving us a play space where there's more room for something and showing me something that I didn't know could, could be before. But uh, so... What you've done, at least for people who feel like I do, is you've opened up the relationship, the, the the channel of communication, so that you can talk to me about construction in a way where I can take you more seriously, right? Right. Whereas if you had said this to me before Osher came out, that you were going to focus on construction this year, there would be a lot of I, I would I would have rolled my eyes and said, right. this this seems silly to me. Um, and I might still, you know, we're using it as an out there example um, for a good right. reason, because it's still a, a part of the game that um, is, it is, um, it's one of the things that I feel like anecdotally, and you can verify this or not, that is the most likely to have people who either uh, do it a lot or zero at all. Yeah. Even more so than vehicles, even more so than. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean, That's because the the level of friction involved in in participating in that versus yeah. the the level of impact that it has uh, typically yeah. is yeah that, that's sort of the paradigm that you see. Um, right. But uh, but you're you're totally right in the in the way that you're phrasing this, the uh, the play, like the relationship that you're cultivating up to that point then mm-hmm. opens you to um, or allows you to communicate with more uh, you know authority on the things that you're willing to or that you're you're sharing like yeah. it's it's easier for you to take a, take a leap of faith if i have a proven track record of yeah you know doing if we cool have things, some right? trust built up exactly yeah. so so that's why i think it's tricky um also why you know it's, it's uh, sometimes that's you know, I, I don't know how i feel about the guild war statement but mm. um, totally understand the spirit of it, and uh, so so help help me understand yeah. what about that statement you don't like, which was the communication is a risk. Is it that is it that, that you oh, think no, no. that the communication is what was it worth worth the risk? That, that that's what they said. It's worth the risk. That's what they okay. said. Yeah. So so with that being the case, um, sometimes it's not. You know, sometimes right. it's about the surprise. Sometimes it's about the building the track record in the background so that you can't communicate. Yeah. You know, I sent a an email to a client today, and this is a client that I, we were trying to work through um, helping get some, getting getting us some software implemented for them. You know, we're going to start like I mentioned, and there's a problem, and there's some problems on their side, and there's some problems on our side. So each of us is responsible for fixing different problems. But there's, there's some confusion about what's going on. I really want to get this problem fixed today. I didn't ran into some roadblocks. Didn't expect, and so I emailed them and said, um, "Hey, um, here's what we're doing." And um, rather than, than, than try to fix the problem, we're just going to uh, spin you up a new, um, a new instance. And because this, this, pro- this problem seems to be localized. So we're going to get the out of local environment, get you a new one. But that's going to take us a little bit of time. Pat out the estimate. Say, here's what you can expect. Um, 
And in my experience, uh, and this is not lecturing, this is I, I hope seeing if this is something that you also resonate with. Um, the, the thing that people most want to understand in a relationship, any, in any kind of relationship, whether it's a, a, a client uh, uh, relationship, whether it's a romantic relationship or, or gamers, is what can you expect from me? And how should, what is your role in this situation? What should you be doing? That mm. seems to be something that people really, really appreciate. And with the roadmap, you've put out the, here's what you can expect from us in a really cool way. Yeah, I'm glad, glad you think so. Uh... Well, I'm, as someone whose job it is to speak on behalf of, you know, software companies in front of customers, client facing, managing those, those expectations is something I, I deal with every single day. Um, at a different scale, different, it's B2B, it's all happening behind closed doors, but still, um, you know, contracts are at stake, relation, client relationships are at stake. And there are some times when you have to communicate, but not say things, right? And I think that might be the truth that you're sort of getting to, where if you're working on something that is really big and cool, but you think there isn't yet the trust built in order to have that kind of uh, transparency, then there still needs to be some kind of signal, um, but perhaps not right on the nose, the right amount of communication, the right type of communication. Right. And not that not we're totally. just getting into fuzzy territory, but <laughs> communication is a topic that I'm just very passionate about. Okay. All right. So what's on the roadmap? Uh, let's see. We talked about um, the codex. Um, I was really pleased to see uh, looping back and giving some help to the original founding community outfits of the NSO. I was really happy to see that uh, because when it's, integration... It's long overdue. Yeah. So t talk about that. Why, why did this get prioritized? Uh, so ideally, we would have done it last year, mm -hmm. but this is one of those things that, yeah, we had every intention of doing that, and then Cascade. Uh, at the same time, we have certain windows where it's like opportune for us to release certain types of updates or just you know certain size updates. So originally, the plan was Osher November, hit it with the anniversary, boom, it's out and it's done. Obviously, you know it didn't hit until January, right? So. That is, you know, and same thing for NSO. So it's like, you know, we have the expectations, we have the timelines, what do we need to cut so that we can still get the most value from the time that we have? Yeah. Oh, man. Something triage. That, yeah. No, we just got a triage. So the the amount of, of outfits, and I'm, I'm not trying to like marginalize the experience or anything like that, but the amount of people who were affected by that particular issue, mm -hmm. very small, small group of, of players. So... Uh, and I also feel that it is a very dedicated group of players. Mm -hmm. So asking them to kind of endure for a little bit seem like the um, the lesser evil than um, potentially, you know, pushing out an update and saying like, no, um, you know, we have these big plans, but they're not going to get done because, you know, we need to invest this amount of time or mm -hmm. we need to make cuts in other areas, you know, to facilitate this. So it's, it's not, it's n never a decision made lightly. Uh, and I'm glad as well that we're getting, getting to it this year, uh, or even in the first part of the year. Yeah. So it was tough to put that off. It sounds like. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause, yeah. cause you it's knew one of those that harsh realities. Yeah. I remember, um, I actually did a video on this last year when I, when I, when I knew it was going to happen and I was like, Oh, it kind of sucks to have an update. That's good for some people, but the people who were the dedicated robots are actually gonna, gonna lose something. It's kind of crappy. Um, but it, that like a token gesture would be appropriate. And now you're actually getting to do the real thing, get it restored back. And hopefully, um, I don't know, is it, 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 uh, hopefully it's not too little too late. I actually don't have any insight into that in those communities, but. Uh, I will say that the, the people who are affected, uh, I still see them playing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I say them, but there's the leaders and just uh, uh, like high, um, 
the high ranking uh, players within these these outfits do seem to be uh, still engaged mm-hmm. with the experience. So hopefully, you know, they're they're here also when they can you know kind of fix their sure. or get their outfits fixed. Um, sure. And so just to be clear on on what that change is, uh, we are. Uh, the intention is to allow the entire outfit to align with a, like you still have to pick VSNC or TR. Okay. But, um, right. It's just going to move the whole outfit. That way you don't need to disband the outfit, which is, Mm -hmm. was the initial suggestion. It's like, Hey, if you're NSO, uh, or NSO original outfit, uh, you can, you can disband or like, you know, you leave the outfit and then you can align yourself to, to one of the, the three main factions. Right. Uh, and then anybody who was left in the original outfits that didn't want to disband, you just just wait, and then we'll get you sorted. Well, this is that you know your passes. It's now. So yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, what we didn't talk about yet is how good the integration update was, other than like this mm. this this little problem, uh, flashing out a whole fourth faction. How oh, cool! Yeah. The uh, the impact of that update was actually interesting too because of where it landed in the year. Wasn't actually expecting it to to do as well or to get the spike um, that it did mm-hmm. uh, during the summer. Like so, it landed in July. Typically, right. we don't do a whole lot um, during the summer months. Uh, mm-hmm. Historically, pre COVID, it was very much like PC players would kind of dip um, during the summer and then come back sure. uh, in the winter. And I, I think that that maybe played into it a little bit. Just be- behaviors have kind of changed, you know as um, just as the the uh, climate is what it is, but yeah, uh, but also the the update was it was just very well received. Um, I feel like it was one of our smoothest releases mm-hmm. for an update of that scope as well, which is a testament to the the team and their capabilities and that sort mm-hmm. of thing. So yeah, no, I was very very pleased with the with the results. Mm-hmm. Me too. Um, I I was that that is what I remember remarking at. Um, which was the small amount of reports I heard from the community about things being tragically broken. Mm. Like how cool that this came out and smoothly. It's a big thing and it got in without a huge amount of friction. There was a problem, but the the outfit thing, you addressed it proactively. It was identified. People didn't log in to find out that they were screwed. Uh, it was, it was messaged ahead of time. There's opportunity for it to percolate through the community. Um, so that's one of those i imagine those building blocks you're talking about which is uh, uh you didn't use that word but this is this is one of those things i imagine that gives you the confidence to say yes we can do a roadmap to know that you can put out releases like that for sure yeah cool cool uh let's see what else for uh the roadmap i'm uh, talking about elephant wars talk about the codex uh what can you tell us anything about the naval vessels you have in mind uh so it's just one common pool uh, okay. naval vehicle. It will be mainly for, for Osher. Um, uh-huh. We'll obviously need a new method to, you know, to, to dispense that vehicle. There's no, uh, there's no real docks on, on Osher. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'll more. honestly, like a lot of that design still needs to be fleshed out and stuff too. And we need to like, it's, I've, I've done some prototyping even before the update went live uh, mm-hmm. or the, the original OSHA update. It's like, man, wouldn't boats be cool? <laughs> mm. <laughs> so it's, so playing with things, like I, I know that we are capable, like fully capable of, of doing it, but it needs to be like properly uh, designed still and like everything accounted for and, mm-hmm. and all the edge cases, like we need, st- still need to, um, to figure things out so i actually don't have enough information to share with you to where this would be um a more amusing conversation i figured i figured <laughs> i'm just i'm just enjoying the the idea of jet skiing around osher uh you know especially like maybe put some little jumps in the water you jet ski off of them. oh that'd be legit that'd yeah, be cool that'd be fun. uh maybe like I, I don't know if this is too gamey but like I, I imagine like um like little like things you can jump through in the air like hoops and maybe it gives you like a boost or something. Uh, I don't know. Like that. We were uh, going to crazy places. On... Yeah. Well, I mean, I I think that's those sorts of things aren't maybe as crazy as, as you'd think. Like I'd always okay. wanted to make the uh, the construction ramp like give you turbo. Yeah. Uh, just because that would be hilarious, right? Um, not that it yes. really has any game value. It's just like it's fun. Um, yeah. Exactly. And then same thing for like 
you know, was thinking about like, okay, well maybe there's a different, uh, I guess I keep going back to construction, but um, like a construction <laughs> thing that's like, like a ring or like a goalpost or whatever that you go through. And then there's some sort yes. of supply of you know, whatever. Um, at one point I was setting up a, um, just for fun, like experimentation, setting up a, a track, like a harasser sort of um, race alert. Uh, <gasps> so I can't get people excited oh, about um, ideas that I've, I've had back in 2000, what's 18 maybe. Um, yeah, and, yeah, but I was like yeah. putting together like alerts um, just to like, Hey, you know, what could we do? And I, I wanted like a harasser race to be one. Yeah, uh, yes. So I was like creating like little spots and then um, they would give you turbo as you, you know, you hit them. So that right. way, if you're like in the lead, you could just kind of nail it. Um, you know, and, and, yeah, no, it was, it was a very fun experiment. I think that planet side two is a sandbox has, a lot of tools to do cool things with yeah and uh and that's in part of it's just like it's a little bit of a puzzle too and this is something that um that really it, it compels me about planet side 2's design is that you have a have players who they're not going to play the game the way that you maybe like like i could make a cool sort of like like aerial anomalies was an, a good example of an, an alert that you know okay. people were very awesome. excited about to start and yeah. then they uh, you are very into it. You know, it, it enabled free aircraft and everybody's flying around and new yeah. players are like getting the opportunity to like learn how to fly for free, yeah. um, you know, without the just sort of limitations that vehicles bring in general. And, you know, there's a lot of participation and then it slowly like kind of tapered off. Yeah, and there's definitely a lot of issues. And then honestly, the second and third iteration also made it worse. They just uh, it wasn't not it was not good for for aerial anomalies. But in general, the mini alerts that we saw uh, they had like the spike of participation is in like, oh, this is very interesting. You know, I enjoy playing in this thing. And then it kind of just goes back to the normal standard. Like, okay, well, you know what? Territory control. And that's the the baseline for the gameplay. Right. So it's, it's an interesting problem to solve. Like there's only so much uh, malleability within the, uh, the player base's behaviors that we can really create interesting changes for long periods of time. Sure. So yeah, and that's just something that I've. It's it's fun from a from a designer perspective because you're dealing with a little bit of psychology. You're dealing with a little bit of mm -hmm. you know just. Uh, yeah, uh, you want whatever you put into the sandbox to be congenial with what was already there, right? Right, and that's it's a difficult ask sometimes when you try to do something that's a little bit off the beaten path, and that's mm -hmm. that's part of the reason why I'm I'm very excited about uh, how Osher's release went. Hmm. Just because it's, you know, because there is so much that's different. Um, and ultimately, I don't think you're going to change the players, uh, though was hoping to try a little bit with the with the changes to the spawn system, obviously, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that didn't that didn't pan out. Yeah, yeah man, that the spawn system didn't last. Went, went back to, to no. the, the, the pre-patch model just a few days ago, right? Uh, right, yeah, on Monday patch that mm -hmm. out uh so the stutter also the stuttering that you're seeing on emerald i did not see it last night when i played out. i think it's fixed cool yeah cool yeah that should be resolved um yeah ooh, it's a, as a designer this is such an interesting game um mm. from multiple areas yeah okay i i kind of enjoyed the the rest the more uh sparse pawns of the the, the osha mm. release I, I felt like it was helping me go back to like um, that 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 same thing, that same spirit of like, oh, vehicles exist, oh, construction exists. Because mm. if I can't just teleport around between my inventory arenas, which is the way I have historically played Planet Side, then it's like, oh, I gotta like figure out how to get from base to base. And and then there's the part of me that's like the Planet Side one boomer, and really remembers mm. those days of like, okay, if you want to get somewhere, you have to get into a vehicle. Like that is how you get to bases. Right. There's no such thing as redeploy. Uh, and um, generally speaking, all the bases are much further apart. You would never want to walk between most of these bases in Planet Side 1. And something about that created a little bit of pacing that I found enjoyable. And I felt like mm. I, I get a, I, I, I caught, catch a little bit of that with Osher, and especially with the more restrictive spawns. But I also respect uh, that people have an expectation about mm. where they should be able to play and what the level of friction to get to those spaces looks like and that's a lot there's a long track record of what people expect there well so you say that but it's but that system uh 
was only implemented in 2019. Okay. Like, and I designed Spawn it. Priority, is that what it's called? <laughs> spawn Priorities. Right. Uh, or Spawn Priority System. Actually, was it 2019? It might have been, might have been the year prior. I can't remember. Right. But, and the intention was to make it, was to reduce the pain point of like, oh, you can't, you know, you have to jump in a vehicle and like fly across the map and then, you know, bail. And that's just what we did for the first, what, seven years of the game. Mm -hmm. That, I mean, that existed for a long period of time. So as far as like ingrained behaviors. When you say that existed, uh, that should be the, what do you, what, what do you mean specifically? Do you mean people just? So, say it again. Uh, so that, yeah. So these, the system that was, that we kind of reverted to was one that you, uh, had during the release of the game. So you know, talking about 2012, um, yeah. limited spawns. There was, there, uh, okay, I, it's kind of, sort of. Um, there was some changes over time uh, made, but um, but not much. So the, the rules were like, oh, you get um, one uh, facility or one tower spawn, one facility spawn, one, yeah. uh, you, know, you know, within X lattice links, you can spawn. Very planet side uh, one, old school kind of in terms of right. approach. Right, and, and that was the case. Until 2019 or whatever the mm -hmm. spawn okay. priority system came in. Mm -hmm. And what I was trying to solve, like with the design, was like, okay, well, a few things. We need to get players to the the battle lines um, mm -hmm. so that we can create like even, mostly even fights. Uh, we don't want you to be in places where like, you know, that are overpopulated and that sort of thing. And then actually, like in that, that's how the system released. Uh, it worked very well for the first <laughs> week that we put it out and then the community was like well they were the community had very strong opinions um about that sort of game gasp because uh but it was it was interesting because there was a level of convenience um in the old system it was kind of overlooked to where like uh if i'm at a fight i don't like even if i'm overpopulating or like you know, over popping i don't want to go somewhere else i mm -hmm. just want to stay right here and just keep fighting yeah um so there was this conversation Push about lane uh, right. So there's this conversation um, within the community that's very, very much like anti-Zerg, right? And yes. Zerg, at least the term back then, wasn't just, oh, there's a bunch of players here, which is seem, seems to be how we're, we're kind of contorting this definition An evolving now. Term. But it was about like, it, it was about like one faction is overpopulated, right? You know, like you have 80% mm -hmm. of TR and they're moving down a lane and they just keep doing that. And they're ghost capping. They're not fighting anybody of significance. They're not getting any real resistance. Uh, yeah. But that's the sort of behavior that that system encouraged. Mm -hmm. And um, and what was overlooked in the new or in the spawn priority system is just how much people wanted to do that. So there's a little bit of um, back and forth that, that went into to play over like about, I think like a, a month maybe where yeah. the system got tempered and it was moved. Um, it was made, it was basically like a have your cake and eat it too sort of system where like if you're in the same fight, it's fine to stay there, keep fighting, whatever. Um, and then when that fight eventually ends, hopefully we're taking you to a different place, uh, with, with evenly populated, um, fights and just it's not trying breaking to up the existing the fights, out. but making sure that when, when there's movement between hexes, that more spawn options right. open up. And I, I think, yeah, exactly. Um, okay. and I, I think that that system did very well, uh, despite some, some contrarians, uh, within the, or like contrary notions within the, the player base at the time. Okay. Uh, so to see it kind of, um, uh, work backwards when when there is like well okay so the, the game got very fast and that's what I was trying to solve with you know at the the release of Osher yeah let's, let's play devil's advocate for a second though what's what's bad yeah. about it being fast why would you try to reduce um, that so it I say it's it's fast in a sense that infantry um, so uh, playing the game is obviously uh, better than not playing the game. Um, as our some of our friends, sure, uh, I'll go with it. Before, but uh, so sitting on a spawn screen not great. However, the friction of sitting on a spawn screen encourages things like logistics. It encourages things like squad play. It encourages things like you looking at the actual map so you deploy to somewhere where there is an actual desire for your presence, opposed right. to playing in the same spot. It causes you so to evaluate that, your approach. Exactly. So one of the things that we're seeing, um, or we were seeing before, is that you know like medics aren't really, you know, capable of reviving before people just redeploy and then, um, you know, deploy back into the same fight. Uh, and that's, you know, it marginalizes that sort of like team-based cohesion. Um, hmm. So it, in a sense, detracts from some of the elements that make Planet Side 2 what it is. So finding the, the proper balance has been 
It's something that's been, you know, kind of like iterated on over time. I think that the spawn priority system was very close, but it's also, it's problematic when it comes to performance um, as well. Yeah. It really is. I, uh, it's, it's hard to like, you can't, you can't point to it and say like, okay, this is the source of our troubles, but it's, it's a big nail that's sticking out that needs to get it's implicated. Mm-hmm. Right. For sure. Um, so when you're, you're talking about like bad hit reg or you, when you're talking about like, you know, just general performance, like orbital strikes taking forever to come down, like mm-hmm. it's compounded by just the, the spawn priority system and the way that it's set up. So one of the gambles that I was taking, um, mm-hmm. with kind of moving back to an older system, which was also loosened up a little bit too, mm-hmm. to hopefully, um, try to, to create like a, a happy medium. It didn't, um, obviously cause we re- reverted it, but, uh, it was meant to try to slow the gameplay down a little bit um, to give people more sense of logistics. Uh, Cause again, I, I feel like the game has gotten very fast. That's, that's my uh, hot take. Do with it what you will. But, um, and then also it was, it would have been good for performance were we to have um, had a yeah. system that people felt comfortable so with. Two potential payoffs. Right. Exactly. Is get back to this certain kind of ground truth which is maybe a little harder to tap into with spawns being so available and also just improve everyone's performance, which I think everyone can get behind. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, I, that, that, that thing you said you were trying to provoke, I know you feel like the system wasn't successful, but the thing you said you were trying to provoke about getting people to reconsider their approach is exactly what happened to me. Mm. Um, and I, I, I don't know if I'm not, characteristic of the majority or what but i liked it um i have adhd someone finally told me this uh about a year and a half ago and i started to learn what that meant and part of it is um irritability right so die oh spawn 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 i'm gonna get that guy and part of it is um difficulty in delaying um gratification all right and when you choose to pull a Sunderer, you're delaying gratification. When you choose to go back to the warp gate to get a galaxy, you're delaying gratification. When you decide to mm-hmm. build a construction base, you're really deferring gratification. Um, so I personally thought that was pretty cool. And it could just be that I was on one extreme. And for me, reducing that extreme, coming more towards the middle was good. Maybe that's just what I needed to come towards the middle. And maybe not everyone's the same as me. I feel like there's um there's definitely I with enough time and effort, I feel like there's a compromise that exists somewhere. Uh doing it with Osher may not have been the right choice. Mm. Uh just because there's a lot of variables. You know, we didn't see that sort of like feedback during the play tests, but yeah. the playtests were also a totally different experience. Like everybody is yeah, you have lots of people. Um, How do you test a game and then meant to be played by a thousand people? Right. Yeah. Uh, and then also, like when you go to a playtest, you're there for a specific purpose. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so you're inherently playing the game differently than you would uh, on live. And though we're trying to to simulate um, a sort of live experience, when we mm-hmm. pull in like six hundred to a thousand players, mm-hmm. it uh, their their purpose for being there is um, is just a little bit different than people yeah. who are kind of like enjoying their their solo time in the sandbox or whatever yeah yeah i i think that this release has shown help me help me understand a little bit better um what the players who want the faster paced side of the game um how do you understand what that looks like a little bit better because i was so close to it before like i didn't see it as clearly um Hmm. and i i see people just want the access they want the action um, for them, the planet side is sort of a more of an arcade experience, less yeah. of a sim experience, less of an MMO experience. Um, I think it's probably very difficult to manage and please people who want either of those things from the game. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, I feel like I feel like right now, Rel, the best thing for us to move into talking to, based on kind of the flow of the conversation, is to talk to you uh, about these two different ways of playing Planet Side, these two kinds of modes. Um, 
I've I've started in my in my mind thinking about them as big and little planet side. Uh, let let me tell you what I think of when I see that, and I I'm I want to ask you about um. It's, it's 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 a question of like vision for the game and the mm. people who play it. But I've long observed the the cultural rifts that appear within this within the planet side scene. I'm fascinated by them. And I despair of them. Um, you might have caught me having a podcast with Commander Sirius like a week ago or so where I sat down and talked to him about a beef that was going on that I thought was kind of needed to be resolved. And it was a shame that it was out there. It, it bums me out when people sharing the same space for whatever reason can't find a way to play together and be happy to play together. And... Um, especially when one side feels like they are not getting what they need. So this big little planet side idea. So big planet side is kind of what I feel like I'm getting back in touch with, with Osher, that I'm having so much fun with. A part of me that's having fun going back to pull vehicles and maybe make a construction base. And honestly, don't look at my stats very much when I'm playing. It's a very different kind of experience and it's kind of liberating. And it, I further, I feel like I'm starting to understand for the first time, players who want to get into a big ball with their buddies, and kind of go down a lane. Whereas before, I was looked at that and saw, aren't they bored? Don't they know that those prowlers outside the base can't capture the point? Mm-hmm. I didn't get it, but this experience on Osher has helped me get that a little bit better. Uh, we referred to earlier as like what the back of the planet side two box looks like. That's that's the hero image. Um, yeah, all the hero images look like that, and the open field zerging, all stuff that I think players who really enjoy little planet side look at with some disdain. Um, and the little planet side experience I kind of see as people who have found a way to play and to um, channel a certain sense of individual mastery into the experience. Um, and uh, the, the part of the game that seems to go the deepest right now, and historically, has always been the infantry game. All the different classes with all the different kinds of weapons, different kinds of slots and utilities and equipment. And the fact that historically, infantry have had the simple ground reality of being needed to capture a base, which by definition sort of makes them almost the most important, I think. Um, and that sense that infantry are important to capture bases and the speeding up of gameplay that you talked about, that's maybe, maybe accelerated this sense of infantry importance. Maybe I'm speculating here, um, since the spawn priority system comes in, where it's like the most important thing is to make sure that boots, that individual players get to a fight that they're going to enjoy as much as possible. In Little Planet side, it's not really important to um, take territory, right? The payoffs for Little Planet side are smaller. The atomic size is smaller because they're scaled to the level of the individual. And it's things like, how many kills am I getting before I die? It's things like, am I having a satisfying back and forth in, a, in an arena, uh, roughly uh, a base, right? Is this base well-designed to incite me from too much noise, Right. The thing about mastery that's most frustrating is when you get really good at something and it doesn't matter because there's too much of variance and noise outside of your control that you can't actually deliver on what you're good at. And in that way, I see the worlds of big and little planet side collide. And in a way, I think big planet side players, for the most part, don't really worry too much about the little planet side folks because they don't need the infantry gods to have their fun and yeah maybe they get farmed a little too hard sometimes maybe and you hear about that experience but much more so i hear from the the little planet side folks and when i I say big and little i'm not talking about importance by the way i'm talking about the scale uh, that they are primarily concerned with the scale of engagement um, and what I see is the little planet side folks get very frustrated and discouraged and feel like their efforts are not worthwhile unless they're able to 
find themselves in experiences that are roughly fair, roughly consistently, most of the time they log in. And um, I have soaked a lot of the grief from those players, not anywhere near as much as you have, I am sure, but enough that I feel like I really want to understand this problem and try to see what what is being done about it. So mm. does that model make any fucking sense? <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. But I think it's a I think it's a sliding scale. Uh, it's, so it's certainly not black and white. It's not right. binary. Yeah. Yep. So just uh, at the top, need to need to clarify that. Like even the infantry sw sweat lords sometimes aren't infantry sweat lords only. Right. Mm -hmm. There's there's other aspects of the game that they enjoy. So if you look at um, even some of yeah, just like our, our dedicated you know Jaeger players or, or whatever, like they most likely had came, uh, come from an outfit. That was doing all the Zergen and doing all the, you know, combined arms play. Yeah, prior I've to seen that. the same thing, by the because, way. Absolutely. Right. So, and that that happens often. So, when I imagine um, sort of that, that hardcore, like, infantry uh, experience, those, so a couple of things. Um, when you're thinking about mastery, anybody is able to then, like, move into that as an option if they so desire. But the game is not structured that way. Like, it is not meant for you to play that way. Uh, the hardcore infantry scene that you see is our players who have um, taken the the box planet side experience and then done something of their own with it. Like they said, you know, like, hey, uh, it's just like, you know, when we organize scrims on Jaeger or, or what have you, like that's an mm -hmm. extreme example of this, but you take it back a notch, bring it to the normal game, and then you're still having those sorts of players like create their infantry fights or they're just looking for the fights that are just purely infantry. That's not yep. the way that the game was meant to be played. It is okay to play the the game that way. Okay. But there's and this is not something that <laughs> probably people want to hear. But mm. the uh when it when it comes to like, okay, what is the vision for for Planet Side 2? The, I I don't know if there's any ever been a question about that. There's Okay. Been a question from the the players who are playing it, like, oh, they need to pick one direction and move with it. But really, Planet Side Two has always been about big combined, you know, mm -hmm. uh, different styles of of gameplay. And the the players who are questioning, like, you know, like, oh, you know, you know, they they need to, uh, you know, focus on this and just like, or so for example, um, vehicles like vehicles should be either super strong and really restricted. Uh, just like a battlefield game, or they should be, um, you know, or everybody should be able to to play in vehicles, or like the vehicles should be, you know, just off in this other corner to do their own thing and shouldn't interfere mm -hmm. with these other experiences. Mm -hmm. Like that was never the intention of the game. Um, that, that's not even, in my opinion, where the game works best. I think that you, it's nice to have um, different spheres of influence, and then there's a little bit of overlap. So when you look at um, uh, just a base in Planet Side 2, usually very infantry centric experience toward the middle, unless it's, it's exposed. Um, and it, some variety is fine too. Like, mm -hmm. it's okay to have bases that are out in the open, it's okay to have bases that are underground. Um, usually, the midfield is where the combined arms is meant to, to sort of occur the transition from one base to the next, right? Um, though, or the domain with cross. the spawn priority system, you're m skipping that. You're skipping that part of the experience entirely when you're right. redeploying elsewhere. And again, that's not a behavior that's intended. That's a behavior that is created because of the the interests of those specific players. And we just say that it's okay. Um, and then also, it's them discovering the most optimal way to to get the best. Or so the that's most a bone their, that you throw to like the little planet side guys, and maybe to some of like the free to players who are right. just don't know don't know like using a vehicle to get somewhere seems like an impossible task when you're just trying to mm. figure out where to point your gun and shoot. Hmm. So that's where the, the middle ground comes in to okay. where like, you know, redeploying to another base, it's okay. It is also a very optimal way to, to play the game. Should we let you do it all the time? Should we let you do it as quickly as, as you're doing it? Like these are, these are questions that there are maybe no concrete answers with, but there's a lot of experimentation. And that's like, for example, when we do things to the spawn system, like with the OSHA release, uh, it's the recognition of like, maybe we have a problem here for all the reasons that I mentioned before. Um, yeah. Can we take a step back and try to find something that bridges both gaps? Because right. at the end of the day, regardless of how the game was meant to be played, we do have this large subset of players who are very interested in this localized infantry experience, just as an example. Um, 
or, you know, to a lesser degree, the construction experience. And yeah. if the game is meant to be the sort of melting pot of all out combat, um, then like there's, there's no harm in, because one person is not going to play all the things all the time. And in fact, we rely on players having their own niche uh, within the game to create the massive game. Yeah, like we we want the vehicle players to be the vehicle players. You know, we mm -hmm. want the infantry players to be the infantry mm -hmm. players, and we also want players who are able to hybridize and do, you know, a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. That's that's what makes this game amazing is that we can support. Yeah, all that we can support all that sort of gameplay. Uh, yeah. So, so I, I have strong like uh, opinions when it's uh, when it comes down to. You know, you, oh, you should never get just like like hammered on by by aircraft, or you should never just you know get you know, shelled at by infantry or like you know by tanks. Or if a, a a tank can see you know this hallway, then it's just a garbage base. Or you know those really extreme yep. opinions, because yep. I, I think it's it's a balance um, for everything, and variety is the most important thing that we can inject into the game, mm. so that these experiences aren't just a hundred percent of the time. And also, if if you're having this experience a hundred percent of the time. And that's like a legitimate um, occurrence. Then I, I think there's probably something wrong with either the people that you're playing with, or the people, or the situations that you're putting yourself in. Because we, because the the majority of players are having such varied experiences uh, all throughout the game. Uh, so, and, and that's it. Also, makes it a little bit difficult to accept these sort of like um, these stances that the players within uh, different, like I guess, social groups tend to operate on where like you see some people say like uh, anti-aircraft or like or uh like air to ground weapons are are too you know powerful and uh yeah. ground to air weapons are are like you know they're like or too powerful like depending on who you're talking to mm -hmm. like when you're a pilot for example there's a strong conversation for like uh you know we're getting locked onto all the time there's nothing we can do about it uh but i know yeah. that's not the case and i see players um able to to navigate that i see um streamers or uh, other players who are who will get very um upset that they've died in a certain way but at the same time are just farming for the rest of the session mm -hmm. it's like you know and so i i don't know what what creates that that hy hyperbole within mm. those different um groups maybe it's just uh our tenure you know of like our insistence on playing a certain way. And whenever that's interrupted, maybe that's when we have the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, but the game wasn't focused on that. And it has never mm. been focused on that. Interesting. Yeah, that's a, that's a strong argument. I'm th thinking about it for a second. There's a lot there. Yeah, just think <laughs> for a sec. Mm -hmm. Because the truth is, I, if I go back to like the, the for me, the, the most true thing of all, which is my own lived experience, I didn't feel the variety in Planet Side very strongly before Osher. Mm. Part of that was my fault, obviously. I take responsibility for that. I'm a big proponent of taking responsibility for your own fun. And in fact, I have to. I have to stop myself from criticizing people who I feel aren't doing it. Um, I think it's just very hard to, to make your reality in general. But uh, something about Osher moved me in a direction, and I was surprised to feel the game able to move me because I didn't think I was movable. I felt like I knew the way I wanted to play the game. And that to me and suggested that there are things that can happen within the game to do this to other players too, who maybe feel stuck. I talked to a couple other people who felt like something about that update also unstuck their experience, let them get back in touch with something a little more, um, a little closer to the root of the tree, you know? And I'm very interested in that. I'm very interested in that. And I'm, I look at, as a Planet Side 1 boomer, I really hate invoking Planet Side 1, 
but it's the game that is the most like Planet Side 2. So it's the only other thing I really got in my brain. Um, and I see like in Planet Side 2 the fact that the bases are so close together. I see things like access to redeploy. I see things like join combat. And these all message to me, oh, this is a game that is trying to make sure I'm always having action. Close gratification. That 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 the way I want to play is more catered to rather than saying, here's a world where you can have a variety of experiences. It's trying to reduce friction as much as possible. And what I hear you saying, which I understand, and I, I feel like I agree with, I'm wandering my way through this personally, Ralph, so I hope you'll forgive me, is that there are points where friction is good. Friction is good. And that having friction allows things to exist that might not be able to exist otherwise. Um... I don't know where I'm going with this. What I'm mostly trying to do is trying to reconcile the passionate players on different sides who love the game and try to mm -hmm. figure out what we as a community can do to help everyone have the experience that they need to have. And I, so I feel have... like I'm hearing you say, Raul, that really, if you like the game for a certain thing, maybe you'll get lucky and get it, but that's not what we're making. That's that's a, maybe a maybe more like solid stance that I'm trying to convey. Because okay. I think that there's a place for everything. Like it is a melting pot because because of the diversity of, of options that you do have access to. Mm -hmm. um, so I, one thing that I, I, I want to kind of touch on is mm -hmm. who you run with, like as a, a social group, seems to like drastically impact your, uh, not just your personal play style, but also your perception of play styles of others. And then also what um, uh, your perception of how other people are perceiving the game. Perception, perception, perceiving. Um, but uh -huh. I like I was watching a stream um, from somebody who is a, a more infantry focused player. Sure. And the conversation that they were having uh, in like squad chat was like, oh, you know, if this was changed, Osher wouldn't have had such a like poor reception. I'm mm. like, poor reception. Like, where, who are you talking to? Which echo chamber? are you hearing this sort of reverberation from? Because when I look, it is it is resoundingly different, mm. um, both in the social media uh, realm, also in playing just the game in general. So I, I wonder how much you have to cut yourself off from the core experience of of everything to that it that you form these sorts of opinions or these these sorts of, um, I, I wouldn't even say it's a, an opinion, it becomes a truth when you're like echoing it <laughs> you know, so much, right? Um, so I, I think that the way that players can, if they so desire, break themselves out of that, um, that experience that they've kind of boxed yourself into is just to play with other players or with, um, with people who don't necessarily engage in that style of, or the, the style of gameplay that you're, I don't know, partaking in, or just like different people. We need to see different people. <laughs> like, uh, just, and just different people in, in general, you know, maybe, yeah, the people... maybe that's the way. The people who you who you who you spend time with become part of you, like that's yeah. that's a universal truth. I think we can easily understand. We're social beings, and also there's a reciprocal quality too, right? Where not only mm -hmm. do we become like the group, but the group becomes more like us. We feed off each other. Yeah. And in a game that's old, these groups become pretty solid, well defined, and they have their battle scars. Mm -hmm. Um. I think it's very hard sometimes for simple simple signals of understanding and enjoyment can go across those lines at times because there are so many scars. Um, maybe my perception of the way that the, the things break down is flawed here. Um, but I generally speaking... I kind of see. I, I use big planet side and little little planet side. I, I'm because they they're reflective of a certain um, uh, complementary modes um, of being. I think 
where um, you can think of it as order and chaos almost a little bit. And I'm gonna go a little woo woo here for a second. I'm so sorry. I kind of believe this stuff strongly. <laughs> if it doesn't go anywhere, I promise I'll stop. Just give me a second to think about it, though. Um, but I think that at some fundamental level, there is rooted in the enjoyment of personal mastery a need to resolve the individual a need to try to understand what makes me different from others and and understanding to order the world around me based on it's a concern with trying to um get in touch with yourself why else would you be so focused on your agency as an individual the experience i can have with my mastery I think that the, the big planet side ethos mode sort of comes from a desire to get in touch with the world. It comes from a desire to have a belonging. It's a, it's a kind of almost social motivation. Um, not to be, not to distinguish yourself from the world, but to make yourself more like the world, to be more in sync with the world. And when we talk about like MMO elements of, of planet side, we talk about things like sanctuary it really feeds that side where um, people are trying to see themselves in the world. And the, you need a world to exist in order for that to happen, to be fleshed out, to be uh, have all these different latching points. But what you need for the resolution of the individual is consistency and the ability for your efforts to matter more. And so I don't see the wants and desires of you know i don't like to call them the salty infantry players that's why i use the word little planet side because i think it i think that that mode is preferred by more than the vocal part of the community might lead us to believe where they seem like a very unsatisfied very vocal minority and there are loud voices out there to be sure but i actually think that and maybe i'm wrong maybe you're going to school me here i actually think that those two modes are quite complementary, and as you say, there's a spectrum aspect of it, right? I like both. It's important to me to be okay at the game, right? I don't want to suck. I look at my KD after a session. If it's under two, I kind of feel stupid, which, to be honest, is most of the time because I'm mostly just streaming for yucks to talk to people. I'm aware of that. It causes me a little bit of psychic pain, but I'm also able to let go of it a little bit because I'm really trying to get in touch with more of what's out there. And the parts of me where... I need to resolve myself as an individual comes more from what you and I are doing right now than from shooting a gun in Planet Side 2, even though there's some linkage there. And so I want to question what I feel like I hear coming from you about that this way of engaging is just not what you're supposed to be doing. And I want to see if there's a possibility to establish a way of thinking about those kinds of players that is more looking towards what they bring rather than what harm they cause. Is that possible? Can we do that? I feel like the way that you're phrasing this is, or framing this, maybe, so maybe in my, uh, maybe in my uh, breakdown of how I think the the game is sort of like okay you know going or who it caters to um is maybe like a little bit maybe i give you the wrong impression maybe for for some of this stuff um yeah because I, I don't know that the like the the hardcore you know if you want to say little planet side it's fine i think it's totally um reasonable because yeah, like i said a lot of players you know started from the box uh you know the the back of the box planet side and then went yeah. into their more uh, hardcore infantry minded your style of gameplay but i i don't know that there's harm in that mm. i think that there is like that's where the mastery is like as you mentioned yeah so becoming better i don't know that everybody needs that i don't know that everybody wants that i don't know that that's even like a necessary component of this game it's just an optional component of this game um but you don't see the back personal. of the box as being optional uh no no i think that's the base mm. experience so at the end of the day, like you're looking at um, players who have played the game for, you know, eight plus years uh, or nine plus years, yeah. uh, which is and where they started and where they are now is not 
like that's not sustainable. So like if you, okay, so say I'm a player who gets in in 2016, okay. 2018, 2000, whatever, um, just not at the start. Uh, my experience, what I desire from the game is different from what people who have been playing back in 2012 probably desire from the game because of all the scars that you mentioned. Um, you know, they've seen sort of like how the game has evolved. They've been through the ups and downs. They've uh, found out the most meta, you know, uh, just optimal way to to play the game. Or they maybe are um, kind of investing their time in like a, just a different form of, of gameplay. Like you have outfits who seem to be playing like a totally different game, you know, on some days than, than other players as well. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. And yeah, but that's... Actually, I, I think some of those outfits those are, actually, are, are, are a pretty good example yeah. of, of unifying those modes, by the way. Mm. Um, yeah. the outfits that, that that really foster a sense of of competency alongside making sure they're playing together and they're playing the whole game, right? They're using construction to yeah. make routers, they're pulling a max when they need a little bit right. of oomph. Like they aren't just Yeah, those are Yeah. That that I think is actually a really beautiful are. thing. Mm. Go ahead. Sorry. Those are the people who uh who have kept like the spirit of the game and mm. are, are playing it, you know, the the way that it was like meant to be played from the outset and haven't fully uh they, they haven't gone full um full like to the the narrowest point of the uh of the, the little planet side hmm. maybe mm -hmm. the, the littlest uh, planet I don't know. side the, the, the littlest planet side no i, I think i think I, that... maybe maybe this model doesn't necessarily work the more that i'm thinking about it like I, I like the spirit of it. I think is accurate. It's entirely um, possible. I'm full of shit. In fact, it's in some no, I, sense I it's highly so. likely. <laughs> no, because I mean, I just think that we're we're just phrasing it differently. And I'm like, so when I say infantry tryhards, like obviously it's it's a very like localized, you know, um, <laughs> punitive term in some respects, or maybe a, a term of endearment, you know, depending on you know who's saying it and when. But uh, there's you know there's definitely I don't know. I, I think it's more just like a there's so many different ways to, to play and the people who have kind of like narrowed their experience down to like, Oh, this is what I enjoy most. Um, this is the most optimal way of, of playing a game. This is how I can destroy the most new players or the most, you know, of the, the least skilled players, <laughs> the farming, the agriculture, the genocidal specialists. maniacs, uh, right? Like those sorts of, of players, um, are only that way because of the length that they've played. Well, I, you know, are probably mostly, um the way that they are now because of just the the length in which they, they played the game for uh because they've you know had the time to to cult or kind of cultivate their own skills and whatever whatever uh where was i going with this i had a point at the start and now i've lost it i do it all fell the time. somewhere in that i do it all that, the time uh, the haystack now what we're what we're talking about is like i'm trying to suggest that that the the little planet side guys the salty infantry players whatever are like they're kind of like one of the two major modes of i think looking at an experience like planet side and it's true that not every single game has to cater to all parts of this stupid equation i have in my head um but um i hear maybe what we can do to clarify this rel is to resolve it into like, a, like an example um that might be make this a little less true for um and again, I, I blame myself if it is that way. Uh, uh, maybe we could talk a little bit about resources and nanite specifically. Oh, no. I know. I know. This is a bone of contention that I hear a lot about. Um, and it's one that I have. I, I understand the arguments on. I feel like I understand the arguments on both sides. I'll give you what I think I hear is both those arguments. And then I, you can tell me uh, what you think. Um, but the argument right now, um, uh, I think I read a stat somewhere recently, and I don't know if it's true, but it was pretty alarming, is that it's possible for a two-man crew to pull 25 main battle tanks in 30 minutes by alternating who's pulling. I don't know if that's true, but mm -hmm. it speaks to a reality of a high amount of access to vehicles and the kinds of resources that are put behind nanite gates, right? Um, and it seems, and um, I don't have the personal experience to validate this as a problem. I do feel like I see a lot of the same people, like sitting in a reaver, sitting in a prowler, sitting in a whatever their kind of favorite, uh, yeah. 
I think I heard them call force multipliers by many is, um, you know, I mentioned earlier that one of the things that I feel like the little planet side folks, um, gr grind against the most is the sense of feeling like those kinds of units in the game are a sort of force multiplier on a base unit, like an infantry unit. And if that's the case, then that, in a sense, suggests that they are superior in some ways. They are sure. they have additional cost. They're gated. Um, and that would also seem to suggest that if it's gated, that it shouldn't be straightforward. Or, um, uh, oh boy, let me, let me think for a second on how to, how to clearly put this. That you shouldn't be able to to stay in that one way of playing all the time unless you were doing something really remarkable um now that's that's the like the little planet side kind of point of view the big planet side point mm -hmm. of view is like this is a sandbox if i want to play with the this toy why can't i yeah it's a three faction game the winner of the continent is not necessarily the best faction we all know this it's fuzzy and part of what makes it beautiful is that it's fuzzy. And you're here to be part of a world. You're not here to be part of a win condition. So let everyone play how they want to play. I think I, I have both sides of that argument, and I understand it. Um, I want to see if we can address that a little bit. Okay. So let's let's walk through the um, some of the steps here. This might okay. be a little bit mechanical. So uh, you, as an infantry player, have yeah. infinite response, um, have, there is no cost for your existence, right? Yes. Uh, you also have the option, um, the tool set, because we're, we're big on t giving players tool sets. Um, yeah, yeah. You can deal with whatever issue is haunting you. Mm -hmm. uh, and especially with teamwork. Like if you, you know, teamwork trumps everything uh, when it comes to uh, this, this game in particular. Mm -hmm. Now, saying that, um, well, I don't want to do that. Or like, I'm not going to pull a max suit because, because that's uh, against my bad, what bad players do. Right, exactly. My Bushido uh, prohibits me from doing such a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, that, to me, is on you as, as a player. Now, that's not to say that that, um, uh, that stance is, is necessarily wrong. Like, I, I do feel like there's a balance between force multipliers. But I can 100% tell you that if we were to um, heavily restrict vehicles uh the gameplay overall would just be worse for everybody like it, it would be less fun for more people i see so Bo it's like a triage thing preserving right. the fun for the greater for the majority right because when and you like when you're, you're looking around um and i guess this is going to depend on who you roll with too yeah but if you're <laughs> When when you're playing the uh, just the normal planet set experience, you're not hopping from base to base. You're not you know QRF all, all across the map. Um, you're not uh, explicitly avoiding vehicles. What do you see? A lot of vehicles, like open field fights. You see a lot of aircraft. You see a lot of everything. If players just like if if that wasn't an enjoyable experience, then players would do it less. Um, is it only enjoyable because you can farm infantry? I don't think that's true. Like based on just the normal average player's experience. However, mm. the veterans player or experience is so heavily skewed toward um, these pain points being uh, their their fun being intruded on. I think that the the mentality is 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 just different. Uh, the pain points maybe hurt more, but okay. Going back to to mechanics, uh, if you, for example, uh, if we were to limit vehicles, the amount of, of which are on the field. How do you make that uh, still rewarding for uh, for the players who pull them uh, without making them more powerful? Because you mm -hmm. can certainly make them more powerful, right? Like you look at um, at battlefield vehicles, and they're they're pretty <laughs> they're pretty um, uh, strong. That's a pretty normal comparison. Uh, is that is right. that these resources multipliers should be like a kind of reward, a payoff yeah. for what? I'm not sure, but it should be a payoff, and you should feel powerful in them. So if if that were the case, if we were to make them more powerful, feel like you are, like yeah, you know, I'm able to, you know, I save up my resources. I'm going to jump into a tank, and uh, and then I'm going to what? I mean, farm people in this game because that's that's what the goal is. Um, outside of maybe ba or like maps like Osher, 
like the experience doesn't necessarily get better there either. You might have more infantry, maybe less uh, vehicles overall on the map. Is that a healthy thing? I think it actually might be the opposite, if I'm being totally honest. Certainly mm -hmm. less healthy from the spectacle that's created. Certainly less healthy for the uh, the players who join because of the spectacle that is you know advertised on the box. Uh, less uh, less powerful because of just the uh, the image that's even portrayed outwardly. So if you're if you're taking it like really uh, into the, uh, like mass appeal or the, the, you know, limited appeal, I, I guess, of planet side too. Like, what do we convey like as our base experience? Oh, it's massive aircraft vehicles, uh, or like, uh, you know, ground vehicles and then yeah. infantry play yeah. and yeah. it's all cohesive. Right. So asking to kind of eliminate or re severely, uh, reduce some aspects of that experience, it, it doesn't, there's no way that this seems like a good idea. Mm. Uh, from just that perspective so you can make the argument though like okay well this and this is the argument that i would make as well like the uh the new player experience right you know people pop into the game they just get farmed by whatever however many hour veteran uh or just like you know a tank sitting up on a hill and that sort of thing and that's maybe what they are receive as their their first experience in the game okay. uh they log off quit never come back right you know we obviously have retention problems when it comes to just the uh, the amount of people who come through the door every day and stick around for 14 plus days. How many come um, through that door every day? So it was uh, roughly a thousand last time I checked. Uh, so we still like, that's a lot of players for a new, for that a free to play. That feels impossible to me. I can't even it, imagine it, so that much to, churn. To be clear, that stat is, but yeah, it's really bad. Um, so that, that stat is though new accounts created. Uh, so oh, whether so. or not that's, padded for you know whatever uh is going on you know there's probably a little bit of play there people playing but with accounts, even, yeah. even that being the case like the future of this game is dependent on uh people coming through the door and then hopefully getting uh, addicted to the experience that they see now yeah. think about what your initial experience was right as a, as a player mm -hmm. you know and all the people talking about osher and how it reinvigorated their first moments yeah. think about all the people who just in the threads that you see on reddit you know, talking about what their first moments were. Right. Don't you want other players who join the game to have that same sort of feels? Mm -hmm. it just, just from that perspective, uh, you know, there's, there's a bunch of ways to look at this problem. And honestly, there's no clear answers. I do think mm. that there's a balance. I do think that things are overtuned in some respects. But I also think that the game would be better if there were more players willing to jump into vehicles and, and have that experience. So catering to Small Planet Side in particular, a very difficult prospect to to like embrace i do think that there's a place for it obviously yeah, when it yeah. comes to the mastery and the individual experience obviously i'm i enjoy that too like i do enjoy being good at the game um am i good at the game no probably not slightly above average i'll take it but we take our moments <laughs> right uh but at the same time like i don't really have an interest in in being like hyper competitive on infantry that's not the way that my experience went mm -hmm. i embraced what planicide was and i really really like all that it has to offer mm -hmm. and yeah doesn't there's, there's no clear answers i don't know yeah yeah it's not clear i think i think that's that's a real ground truth we can establish i really appreciate what you're saying about the experience of planet side that is available and unique that is the large scale persistent multiple kinds of things like the, the sense of you asked, you asked me what, what my first experience with Planet Side was. I remember it, and it was actually the Planet Side 1 beta. I was coming out of a tower on Amorish, uh, the Planet Side 1 variant of Amorish. I was playing the, with, with uh, I wanted to play a heavy soldier. It's the reinforced exosuit. So I have like a heavy, like a heavy infantry gun and an anti vehicle gun in my second slot. Very well, much like the PS2 heavy assault. And I come out of this tower, there's a short hill in front of me. And I hear gunfire on the other side of it. So I walk up to, I walk up to the top of it. I see a galaxy and a reaver fly overhead. And all of a sudden our door is getting shelled. And I'm returning fire to some of the infantry on the other side of the hill. That is like that is what this game does that that seems unique. And access to that is um I hear what is what is you are zeroing in as zeroing in on as the main distinguishing characteristic of planet side yeah 
and that's what's special. The interesting thing about it is that in order to have that experience, you have to point your cursor with the mouse and shoot. And that experience, that is number one, not easy. And that's actually one of the hardest things to do in gaming, I think, is to shoot a gun in an FPS. I think a lot of us are, are desensitized to that, but it, it's quite true, I think. Especially when someone else is shooting back at you. Um, and uh, because Yo, it's can hard... Can I interject? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, mentioning that, you know, first person shooter, you know, trying to, especially like fast-paced gameplay. Uh, yeah. Players... So slower forms of gameplay are good at um, helping acclimate players to the game. So when you jump in a tank or, you know, if you if a new player jumps in to some Sunderer and there's just basilisks on the top and they're just thump, 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 the fact that they're shooting at things, the fact that they're getting hit markers just feels good. Like that's where the, the players are getting their sense of like, mm, you know, uh, oh, this feels good. I like I'm this having experience. having effect, yeah. Exactly. Like, and that's, okay. that's the initial, that's one of the reasons or one of the arguments I, I guess you can make versus like, okay, you drop into a fight and then there's, you know, this infantry corridor and then you get, you know, triple tapped by somebody with a, you know, anchor or what have you. It's, and you're going to get that too, I'm sure, <laughs> but slower forms of gameplay in general will help, uh, helps players become more acclimated to the game. That's why the, well, one of the reasons why there is a construction scene, that's why um, you have players who just, they enjoy outfit play. That's why you have players who enjoy shelling spawn rooms. Yes, it seems so inane. Yes, it seems so boring. Yet it's mm. not. It's the reason that some people stick around. Now, we've given you all the tools to go elsewhere. Like if you are a veteran player or to counter these sorts of efforts or to find friends, hopefully to help you counter, you know, these, you know, bigger uh, groups of, of players. And uh, I think that if anything, uh, it should the onus should be on the veterans to try to make the that experience better for themselves. Like actually, you mentioned it. You're having um, uh, ownership over your your own enjoyment of the the game. Yes, yes. And we have created so many opportunities for you to, to do that. It might not be all the time. That's the game is not set up to have an all the time anything. Mm -hmm. But that's that's the beauty. Like that's that's why we've gotten to ten year anniversary. That's my take. Uh, all right all right this is good this is good thanks for letting me push you on this a little bit i really appreciate your uh openness um so i guess that means that that uh we're okay with nanite gain resources being however high it needs to be to let people jump into stuff so well it's not to say that there's there shouldn't be it's not to say that the balance is perfect right okay. time and place for for everything there's plenty of people who don't use their nanites at all why is that happening i don't know um you know just because of bushido or because of friction or because of you know, use them on a disinterest in that they don't go very fast but, right you yeah. know um so there's there's that uh, element as well mm -hmm. and that's not to say that like you know some things just aren't or like it's not to say that uh you know all the you know, explosions in the game are necessarily healthy for for the game. Just as like an area example. of effect you know, weapons, right? So there's there are certainly things that aren't um, probably not super great. Like Bastion Fleet carries, we're planning to address. You know, some of that next year in the roadmap. Yeah, you know, they yeah. right. They or yeah, yeah, later this year. Um, mm -hmm. We had, uh, you know, it had a great initial push. Everybody was in the spirit, and then as soon as it got optimized, or like. Um, or maybe just uh, players didn't want to pursue that sort of friction of like, uh, you know, jumping into an aircraft, needing a bunch of people to help you, you know, swarm a bastion yeah. fleet carrier to take it yeah. down. Uh, that luster went away and now it's just a farming chariot that, you know, for most of the time yeah. would just cruise across the map and then the, the leader just, you know, right clicks on the map and then you just get a bunch of kills. Mm -hmm. Like that sort of experience. Yeah, probably not healthy for the game, but that's not the initial experience that, that was had. Yeah, like it served its purpose. It just needs to be iterated on iteration a little bit faster. Iteration, right? That, iteration. That's in the key. Is a, yes. Yeah, I respect that. Yeah. I respect that. Can I float a hypothetical by you uh, in this whole sure. realm of like skill expression and stuff? Um, how uh, how bad would this be? Um. Oh boy. 
maybe I don't want to ask this question. It's a little bit of a silly question. Sometimes when I'm trying to understand um, different sides of, of dialectic, um, people who aren't familiar with the term dialectic, it's when two things seem to be true, but seem to be a opposite of each other. And people who, having a game that requires skill to be very good at, but having a game where skill sometimes matters hardly at all, is what I consider to be a dialectic. Hmm. Um, and uh, I like to try to understand these by pushing them to one extreme or another. And so the one extreme of like the, the little planet side dialectic is like purely an arena game. 6v6 infantry. Actually, the community has created this, right? They've had their infantry leagues, Planet Side Infantry League, Farmers League, these kinds of things. And the other side of this, I'm asking myself, what does that extreme look like? And I kind of imagine, I kind of imagine a game where there's no aiming involved. There's no skill involved at all, really. It's all strategy, right? It's all about spectacle. And I think that probably that would be bad for the game. What I'm trying to We've been talking about balance, right? And for the most part, the balance perspective I'm hearing from you, I feel like, is here's why a focus on the small skill stuff is bad. Um, and here's why a focus on the big, um, like combined arm stuff, is very good. But I'm trying to find out where, how far we can push it to the combined arm side before it starts getting bad. Mm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that it's bad i know that it's well i brought the example of not having to aim your weapon to shoot people like having the game mm. auto aim for you like that to me okay. is pushing it very far in that direction that seems gotcha, obviously gotcha. bad to me is there okay. a nearer point that is still bad i'm just putting this out there mm. yeah i like, honestly i don't know how to how to enter like one of the things one of the things that 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 uh, people complain about with like max suits, right? Especially anti-infantry max suits, mm -hmm. is that they is the feeling like they lose at the infantry terminal rather than losing when they're out in the field. And uh, there's a I think a good place for both those decisions to have impact. And so you put not having to aim your weapon as all the way like on the extreme, not having to shoot to kill, and not having that aim mm -hmm. to kill on the one extreme. But on the other end of the extreme, you put maybe treating all vehicles and construction stuff as like a force multiplier and people spend most of their time in infantry stuff like that maybe that's an opposite extreme so we're somewhere between those two extremes and where does something like uh like max suits lie where does something like um like bastions you just mentioned um yeah. as a good example something that's a little too far on the side of um the fantasy instead of having a skillful experience. Okay. Um, so certainly I think that some of that conversation probably just needs to be restructured when it comes to uh, the players who are, who are having it. So like max suits as an example. Um, yeah, they have you know a whole bunch of health. Um, also very easy to kill. But the players who have the biggest problem with max suits are are usually the ones who aren't equipping C4 or they just don't want to, to deal with, with them, you know, because it's just this blip, this interruption of the gameplay experience or when max suits are just en masse or rather um, they're, they're massed on point. Uh, you like, you can't break it unless you have to, unless you do something that you don't want to do, which is pull another max suit, talk to other people, have them pull the max suit. However, you could be phrasing or you could be interpreting that as like that strategy component of the game Mm -hmm. um, is a skill that is needs to be cultivated. Even just the soft skills of having conversations with people to get them motivated to do things, <gasps> that's maybe not a skill that you are looking to cultivate. However, that is a big component of a social, massively multiplayer true. online game. Big true. So, right. And it's, yeah, it's just a little bit difficult. So, but the, the opposite. So when you think about like a Bastion Fleet Carrier, for example, um, right-clicking on a map, like you can... At this point in the game, you can have a solo outfit. You can grind out yep. the resources. You yep. can, you know, have your own thing. And yes, that's too much power for a single player to have because you, as a singular individual, mm -hmm. now takes well many many individuals to then deal with, uh, or I guess a, a few individuals for a long period of time um, to Either deal way, with all the, the hard points. It's with. a little too much for a little too little effort. 
Right, exactly. And finding that balance is something that uh, I think will be debated probably until the end of time. But there are some clearly, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, But there are some clearly broken examples like the Bastion of the Inferior. Um, Or you can make the argument for outfit orbitals or whatever. But honestly, those are, to me, they're more entertaining than anything else. Like, ah, you know, I I died whatever once, or I I bounced away from the fight once, or I had to go indoors for half a second. Oh, no. Yeah. I think like when when those things are in the right stage, like uh-huh. you kind of bitch about them in the moment, but then afterwards you look back at it and it's like, ah, eh, it's okay. It was kind of a funny I moment, think- or or maybe you sometimes are the one doing it to the other guy, and mm. that's where the sandbox elements feel kind of good. Like it's like today, today me, tomorrow you, um, mm. and for it to be some of that. Like, like for example, be, to be the guy who pulls the max unit, right? Uh, like maybe a small infantry fight or something like that. Um, sp- talking about maxes specifically, the complaint that I, I hear more often from the uh, the little planet side guys is um, um, not so much about uh, the fact of the max, but more about like something like mass pulling. Uh, yeah. something like, especially when maxes are doubling down on sort of an already um, unfair situation, like uh, yeah. a bunch of maxes sitting on a point when it's like a 70-30 pop advantage. Um, and, you know, maybe those guys are having fun. Maybe they feel like they're geared up in the middle of a war. I don't know. I don't know. Right. And that, that probably so- is has some validity. But mm-hmm. can we find a way to balance that? Like, I've heard suggestions about, like, well, what if what if the resource cost to pull force multipliers within like two hexes uh, scaled? I mean, this is a crazy design idea. I apologize. Mm-hmm. It could be whatever it needs to be. It's just an example of this kind of thinking. Make the cost to do those kinds of things uh, go up as their relevance, as, as, as they are not needed, if that makes sense. So the yeah. less useful a max is, the more it should cost. Because sure, you can kind of say stuff like, if if we wanted to um to take this example um and then totally have people on Reddit run with it, you could for example have a separate terminal that's just you know used for maxes and maybe it only comes online when the fights are of a certain scale, right? So any sort of like if you get a max to uh, a yeah. small fight, it's usually because you would have then had like overcome some sort of friction to to get it there in the first place. Um, like those sorts of things could be sorts of things. <laughs> like sure, sure, they could sure. be options that uh, could be entertained, yeah. but. Um, at the same time, like uh, you mentioned that sort of, uh, you know, okay, I'm, I'm gearing up to defend my base. At the end of the day, the the sort of like, oh, it's a fair fight is a social contract. Like that's not what the game wants you to do. Game wants you to capture the base and move on, right? Mm. So some of that needs to be like self-patrolling. Um, but some of, you know, people aren't playing by those rules. You know, they weren't inv- invited to your uh, you know, little, you know, 12v12 on, you know, <laughs> gray herring or mm. whatever uh, but big devil's yeah, advocate I, I, can't you apply that same argument to like like outfit wars and the fact that it was only 1v1 and like people can it's kind of a social contract so yes it, I, I think you have a good answer for this but why, why is it bad to for outfit wars to have that but okay for live alert planet side to have that so the is the goals are different the okay. goal of Planet Side 2 is structured in such a way that uh, you are, A, looking for personal progression. Like, as a player, you are yep. ver- very much incentivized to, to get certs, get experience, you know, capture the base, defend the base. Um, those are the, the goals. Um, but for the for the veteran players, they're looking for, okay, fun fights. Um, I want to fight... Uh, actually, you know what? Honestly, a lot of them are... Uh, <laughs> rules for thee and not for me where like they'll be able to farm all sorts of individuals and then you know the moment they get stomped by a maxi it's like oh no this is unfair um, and Rail yeah, throne shade let's happens. go so gauntlet throne so um, and then you have but the, but the structure of the sandbox is the same to where we've already outlined the goals there's an alert win the alert there's a base capture the base uh, there's a sunder quite honestly blow it up you know that's sandbox but for competitive we want the game to be structured in such a way that you are having a competitive fight uh mm-hmm. like that that was the goal from the outside and then people uh for their 
you know, for the social contracts or whatever, actually they're, they're looking for ways to undermine the experience uh, that we are looking to create. So hmm. different set of rules. Uh, in plan- just to clarify, how, again, how, how, sandbox, how are they trying to undermine? Sorry, I'm not quite sure what that means. Uh, okay, so just to, to clarify again, sandbox, yeah. uh, fight the players, win the game, capture the bases, win the alert, right? Okay. Uh, for Outfit Wars, uh, win the... Oh, actually, <laughs> I see, hey, where you're, where you're you see what I'm got setting it, up here. It. Yeah, um, but the, the goal is competitive. Or uh, I don't even want to use the word competitive. We got raked over the coals for that sort of thing. But uh, the experience was meant to be like a sportsman-like event. It's a for sport. players to like a sport. The team to, is better prepared. Case, you know, that that that's more skilled should generally right. win. And our perspective of that was: you are playing the game with the intention of winning, not playing the game with the intention of helping somebody yeah. else win. Yeah. So that's where that kind of fell apart, and that's yeah. also why we're moving to a one v one format. Okay. Um, to avoid just the the policing that needs to be done on the the social side of things to to okay. make sure that you know there's play I like this. one another. I like this. This makes sense. This is what I, what I was expecting you to say. Um, mm-hmm. and it suggests that there is room, there is an interest in finding a uh, experience that more rewards um, consistency and skill, which is the thing a lot of players want. And Outfit Wars one v one is going to be one of those things. Um, it's already a big thing by itself, I feel like, but I'm going to ask, ask the question, um, are there more things that you're interested in or that we can look forward to that are in the same vein as moving towards Outfit Wars 1v1 to give more yeah. of that, the skilled player wins experience? Yeah, it's totally know where you're moving with this. Um, and in fact, I saw it come up in conversation when you were talking to, I think, Kamikaze, mm-hmm. uh, you know, about the, you know, big plan side, small plan side, you know, the game should be, you know, maybe smaller or, or what have you. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I would say you could do such things as long as it's paying credence to the fact that there is a sandbox. One of my big apprehensions about Alpha Wars in general was that it was pulling people from yeah. the sandbox I think we talked to about go that into the, the separate mm-hmm. mode. And the difficulty with that is that you need players to have fun on, yeah. you know, in the, the main mode of, of Planetside 2. So the more that we uh, break things off, uh, if we were to do it, you know, I, I think Capture the Flag would be super fun, right? Hell like, yeah. You know, doing it. yeah! Hell exactly. yeah! Um, if, but uh, it would, of course, be, you know, a separate side of the game. It would, you know, detract. Uh, would pull players, players away, sandbox. probably, probably. So, well, and and that's, yeah, that we were like we're tiptoeing around areas that I <laughs> don't want to delve. Too I get it. Into. I get it. Like I'm, I'm but, talking uh, about like like high level yeah. interest. We don't need to coalesce it down. I'm not going to try to. For I'm sure. not going to try to get you to say something you shouldn't say. Um, but it sounds like that there. The thing I'm trying to zero in on is that there is an understanding of what those players want, and there is an understanding sure. of what those manifestations could look like, and that right mm-hmm. now. Alert continental play is not. You don't think that it's a good place for those things, but you think that Outfit right. Wars could be a good place for those things, and who knows what the future of Planet Side could look like. Certainly, and until then, there's always Jaeger, there's always you know Test Server, you know okay. those community run uh, events that can get you closer to that. If you know that is something that is like yeah, you're you're kind of wholly devoted to yeah. And just so people know what Rel's referring to, the cog I have with Kamikaze, people don't watch every single minute of my content, uh, like Rel does, apparently. Thank you, Rel, by the way. Big supporter. Um, I like it. it <laughs> is, I was putting out this crazy idea of how do we how do we make Planetside easier to accept for most people? And the, the easy idea that I had was shrink it down. Shrink it down. Give it to people in smaller bites. Smaller number of players, smaller amount of options. Um, give people the chance to learn how to play in an infantry fight, give people the chance to go to a place where all you can do is roll around in a tank. That's all everyone, that's all anyone's doing. Um, and uh, that does exactly what you said. It pulls people away from the sandbox. The thing about planet side that kind of already hangs together. It's the golden goose, right? And you don't want to kill or starve out the golden goose. Yeah, it was our initial promise. And we just want to make sure that if we, you know, go that direction and start 
on well yeah we just don't want to undermine that promise where it is all you know we yeah. want to respect it yeah 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 i'm gonna throw one more outfit wars this question at you uh okay uh so part of the reason i was really relieved about the 1v1 thing i should have mentioned this before i totally forgot i'm sorry um is because i i i'm an optimist i really wanted to love what what was made what the experience was but after i sat on it for a few months and i'm a sl i'm very slow okay the, the the thing i came away with is that that like the alpha alpha 3 experience is like you can have the tournament bracket like or you can have the the, the 1v1v1 like it kind of either works but when you, it's when you put them together that it kind of um it kind of, kind of fights each other a little bit i felt like um and so I'm good, glad we're going to the 1v1. And it made me think, oh man, I hope Desolation's not dead. Is there any possibility of getting some like exhibition matches going between like some uh prominent outfits one of these days? Like a like a show match or something like that? Right. Yeah, show match stuff is definitely where I think the one v one v one uh could still be you know uh integrated. I would love to see that. Mm, a lot of people would. Yeah, no no plans for this. I'll say no plans for it this year. Sure. Um, be, yeah, it, it's there's already going to be like enough mountains to move when it comes to uh, moving us to like a one v one format. Of course. That, uh, but it is it is something that um, you know people have have uh, you know, mentioned having interest in, and right. I, I think it'd be great if we could you know just just pick a map and say like oh, okay you know you do this on you know Coltier or you know what have you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, having that sort of flexibility would be would be great. It's just. Um, tech uh, and, and UI and everything else kind of <clears throat> yeah um, yeah yeah, yeah so you you also think it's a cool idea but as with all things it's mm -hmm. a matter of effort and trade-offs for that effort oh yeah no totally um, there's no shortage of ideas you know about the just right. the ambition and the potential this future is the gamer for, for error we all think we're amazing because we have good ideas but the truth is on your <laughs> side of the aisle I know a little bit about this because I work in software but not in games mm -hmm. is that good ideas are easy the hard right. thing is making them, making them go. For sure. Yeah, yeah totally. And on that note, I want to take another short break, Rel. You cool with that? Sure. All right. Back in a few minutes, folks. Be right back. Hello, we're back. Did you miss us, chat? It's me, Deeg, talking to Rel. We've been going at it for three hours. It doesn't feel like more than 15 minutes has gone by, though. Talking about Planet Side just never gets old, does it, Rel? <laughs> no i enjoy it clearly clearly <laughs> when um uh, we're gonna wrap this up pretty soon folks but and let, let, let rel get some sleep tonight but um i remember i was going through a whole bunch of notes before we talked as i always do and i picked out i think it was a comment it was either by cardo or andy sites i can't remember who it was about how like um you they people talk about passionate developers and they're out there and there's passionate developers and then there's rel and i've heard that from a few different people who've worked for you but you set a different Aww. bar for caring about the thing you're making and uh being in the public spotlight you've been in and getting some of the feedback you do that's it seems to me that you have to care you have to care. Otherwise, why why bother talking to someone like me who's going to drag you through a two-hour discussion about Big and Little Planet Side? <laughs> that takes a lot of love. Yeah. Uh, that's very nice. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, Car yeah, and Cardo in particular has definitely said, said some things that I, I appreciate. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I don't know that I'm, uh, I'm worthy of all of that. Uh, I, but I certainly appreciate. We appreciate you, dude. We appreciate you for your hard work. We appreciate you for showing up. We appreciate you for making yourself available for stuff like this. And I want to especially thank you for uh, waiting deep with me on some of this stuff. I know not everyone's going to come away with this feeling like they had their their play style or their point of view validated. But I hope that people at least feel like they understand where things are coming from a little bit better. And like we're all a little bit, bit more well connected than we were before. That's the main thing I care about. And if you think that I did a bad job of that, I know you'll let me know. I take that feedback very seriously, just like a guy like Rel does. I know that he listens. I always see Rel stalking random streamers, 
he's on Reddit threads. Like he reads all the stuff and all the good and all the bad. Isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh yep uh to, <laughs> man i should probably stop <laughs> at some point i think i'm addicted but uh but yeah no um all of the all the feedback you know it's, it's taken and then uh kind of weighed in the balance of of everything yeah it's it's important to do that yes you know you could take a dump on you know uh certain play styles or or you know or, or me or, or whatever like that's that's totally I, I get it like i understand coming at it from the perspective of a, of a player and especially mm -hmm. people who've been playing this game for so long you bring um, their own kind of passion right yeah totally yeah. yeah and on that note let's let's call it a night man this has been good uh, anything else you want right. to you want to say any parting message for the planet side community the podcast listeners and you want to promote uh, like a game like Planet Side? <laughs> Download Planet Side yeah, too now. Right, right. Uh, yeah. Um, I no, I just uh, just thank you very much for the for the conversation. This was actually yeah, I, I mentioned it to you off stream, but I'm surprised that three hours actually went by. Um, also, you <laughs> you wrote me into another three hour stream again, but this time uh, unbeknownst to me. <laughs> I got bad news for you. It's going to happen again. Yeah, probably yeah very likely <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh but no I, you know appreciate the conversation uh of course and uh and all the topics are insightful and or the you know this discussion regarding these topics um yeah i don't know i think we got really cool stuff lined up for 2022 yeah and you know and 10 year anniversary oh man i didn't even ask uh, you about that i didn't even put you in that position but i am so curious what we got coming up for a 10 year yeah, I hope that, I mean, I hope that the whole year is good. Uh, yeah. I'll say that. You know, 10 years is like, a, it's, a, it's a great milestone. Um, you don't want to like overhype or, or oversell, you know, mm -hmm. anybody on, on anything. But um, but yeah, like it's, we should acknowledge it and like, you know, celebrate the community and celebrate just the, just the, this game's existence and, you know, all the, the future years to, to follow. That's right. Here's so. to the next 10. Word. Word. All right. Thanks, folks. I'm Deeg. This is the Deeg Podcast. Um, I'm everywhere. YouTube, Spotify, Apple. And uh, if you like my stuff, do me a favor. Like this thing. Maybe subscribe. Maybe uh, check me out on Discord or Patreon. Links are going to be somewhere. You can click around to find them. I love all y'all. Every planet man and planet woman out there. Even the robots, too. And love flows all around us as a certain sappy movie has reminded me every single Christmas. That's all I got. Thanks, Ralph. Thanks, everyone. See ya. Thanks, guys.